in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed we're going to pray in tongues. Please hold your hands together. Please, guys, come up. You can come. Just hold the mic. Worship team, you can excuse them for a while. Um, Benga, come up. Promise we're going to pray very seriously in tongues. Remember, I told us we are pushing some things in the spirit. Praise the Lord. After we've praised, let's pray. There's still space. Kenny, Kenny, Pastor Alpha, come up. Let's just fill the mics. We're going to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. I'd like you to lift your voice. Say after me, in the name of Jesus. Shout it again, say in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare that every stronghold attempting to stop prophecy from manifesting in my life, I challenge you right now. Lift your voice and pray. Oh, wants to oppress me I plead the blood and I declare my liberty now lift your voice and pray Jesus, the spirit of ancestry, 
and the covenants of the fathers affecting my lineage and wanting to affect my life i decree and declare i've been called out of every tribe every tongue every nation release me now release my destiny lift your voice and say Release me in the name of Jesus. The ordinances of darkness, the spirit of ancestry. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. The spirit of hardship, the spirit of a hard life. I decree and declare that the Lord judges you over my life. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. The spirit of a hard life, the spirit of hardship, a hard life. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Every force of darkness sitting on my glory, stopping it from manifesting. I curse you in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and prophesy. I command my lights to shine. I command my lights to shine. The Bible says, Arise, shine, for your light is come. I decree and declare, it's my season of triumph. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. One more time in the name of Jesus. Every force stopping my helpers from reaching me through bad reports through divination through misguided reports I command in the name of Jesus that the Lord is against you release my helpers to my destiny lift your voice and pray please pray whether you understand what you are praying or not pray open your mouth and pray Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yet the set time, the set time, set time, the set time. Is now. 
I like you to pray this one with all your heart. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every spirit, every spirit that makes men trivialize my gifting, that, that make men trivialize the anointing on my life, that makes men trivialize what God is doing to me, I come against you right now. In the name of Jesus, it's my season of celebration. Lift your voice and prophesy. The spirit that causes men to trivialize what you represent, to trivialize what God is doing in your Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus, everything that should be in my life now and was hijacked by the enemy, I place a demand in the name of Jesus. Locate my destiny now. Lift your voice and pray. Pray, pray, lift your voice and pray. Like the bones in the valley of Ezekiel, I command let bones be joined to bones. Opportunity joined to opportunity. Favor joined to favor. Say after me in the name of Jesus Every force of darkness Programmed to kill my prayer life Programmed to kill my passion for God Programmed to kill my appetite for the world I come against you right now Lift your voice and redeem your prayer life Lift your voice and redeem your, your world life Hallelujah. Everyone will pray this, but the brothers, I want you to pray this. Praise the Lord. Brothers, when we raise this prayer and I see any brother looking at me and you are not praying, I walk up to you and hold your hand. It's a serious prayer. Say in the name of Jesus, the grace for speedy establishment. Lord, release it upon my life. Lift your voice and pray. The grace that causes men to be established on time. There is a cause of darkness that causes men to be established late. At 40, you are still in your father's house. At 40, you are still living from hand to mouth. It's a cause. Please pray. Please help us on the earth. Establish me. Send me help from Zion. Establish me on time, on time, on time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everyone pray this 
but I want our sisters to pray this with all your heart. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name Jesus. Of Jesus. The spirit of unnecessary lateness. The spirit of unnecessary lateness. Lateness in life. Financial lateness. I curse you in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and pray. It should happen on time. It should happen on time. There is a time allocated. Every time is not convenient. There is a time allocated. name of Jesus in the name of Jesus father, father I know it is within your power to turn my life around I ask you in the name of Jesus turn my life around lift your voice and pray change my story my life around pray pray do a new thing do a new thing what has not been done before not the same kind of miracle not the same kind of do a new thing something that has never happened before do a new thing change my life turn it around oh God Let me add this one more prayer. He says, Son of man, can this bone live again? And the prophet said, Honestly, I've been a prophet. So prophesying is not something that is new, but this for this case, I don't know. And then he said, Prophesy. He didn't say discuss, he didn't say cry. In one minute, I'm not going to tell you what to say, but I want you to stand and look at your destiny. I want you to prophesy, carry the word of God like a drug, put it on your destiny. My destiny, I speak to you. You are alive, hear the word of the Lord. I command you to rise, I command you to grow. I program favor in you. Pray, I program breakthrough in you. In the name of Jesus, I speak to my destiny. You are a manifestation of the word of God. You are a manifestation of the favor of God. You are the manifestation of the goodness of God. I take away pain from my destiny. I take away regrets from my destiny. I take away sorrow from my destiny. I prophesy goodness. I prophesy joy unspeakable, full of glory.
lift your hands. You shall shall you lift your hands. In the name of Jesus, you have prayed. I decree over your life. The Lord has declared that this is the year of triumph. We are angry and we are insisting that it must happen. Therefore, I decree and I declare that if there is anyone under the sound of my voice, under any kind of siege, that will not let you see the faithfulness of God, I decree and I declare right now, that power leaves your life right now. That force leaves your life right now. Hallelujah. We're about to listen to the word. While your hands are lifted, I want to do an impartation of understanding. Listen. Most people think they know, they understand scripture. It's not true. I decree and I declare, I stretch my hands towards you. May the spirit of understanding, capacity to comprehend the systems of the kingdom, I release it upon you right now. Receive it right now in the name of Jesus. I open your understanding. I open your understanding. I open your understanding. I command your mind to be receptive. I decree that your spirit will beat the signal in the name of Jesus Christ. Please sit down if you can. God bless you. Good evening. Brothers and sisters, the weeks that are coming will really mean business. You know, I've been saying this. I know it in my spirit when a reality has been declared to manifest from the realm of the heavens. But you know that it is not yet your experience. There is no believer who sits down knowing what God has ordained for your life and watching the enemy play games with your life and you sit down and hope things will change no sir you have to engage with understanding engage with understanding until that which is yours comes to you the bible says right from the days of john the baptist and until now he says the kingdom suffered violent and the violent the violent spiritually violent those who will insist and say, I'm not taking anything less than this promise of God's word. They are the ones who take it by force. I am passionate about results. I never, never associate with anything that does not have capacity to produce results. I am a result-driven person. This is a result-driven ministry. The fierceness of life does not allow for stories and grammar. People want real results in their lives. And let me tell you this. If you're a man of God here, listen to me. No matter what you claim to be doing, if it does not translate into genuine results, you are wasting people's time. It's as simple as that. Herein is our Father glorified. 15 verse 8, John hearing this is how god takes glory from men when ye bear much fruit when your results are notable beyond argument notable beyond sentiment he said by so doing you will prove that you are my disciples you will prove that you have sat down under my mentorship and tutelage your results validate the efficacy of the teaching ministry of the Holy Spirit when our lives are barren of certain dimensions of results is an indictment on the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit results that defy background results that defy the expectations of naysayers and men and women who look forward to your failure as their self-fulfilling prophecy but you must contend for it 
Hallelujah. I've been thinking, you know, I've been thinking about you all through the week. My mind has just been, Lord, there are dimensions that we must enter before the end of this year. The word of God will not go void. When God speaks, it is within his power to make it happen. Are we together? But it has always been a partnership. It's always been that way. That the heavens must partner with the earth for realities to be established here. And so, my assignment is to scan through and make sure that we tie every loose end that can force or that can, can sabotage this prophecy from finding expression. My job is to search and find out and to remind us and indoctrinate us with the truths that are capable of bringing results. Results that are predictable. Results that are consistent. Results that have nothing to do with the wishes of men. Hearing is our Father glorified. Hearing. If you have ever wondered how God takes glory from men, this is how it happens. When you bear much fruit, much fruit, much fruit, not little fruit, much fruit. When results become, um, become notable, notable and consistent, it will compel any force of darkness, regardless of sentiment, to know that the hand of God is upon your life. Hallelujah. Every dimension in the spirit has a price. Every level, every dimension of greatness has a price. And by the grace of God, he has granted us this privilege as a ministry to laboriously open God's people to the demands, the price requirement, the cost dimension of certain results that we need. I am passionate about connecting people's desires to the formula and the principles that have been designed for those outcomes to manifest. It is one thing, if you can tell me what you want, if you can tell me what you desire, I can show you the mystery that is allocated for that result. There is a price. I wish everything were, would just happen without your cooperation. But that's not the way the system of God works. There is a price. The price we are talking about is the price of alignment. The price of partnership. Because you see, the operation of the system of the kingdom as we have learned is such that it comes by grace but it says through faith they are not the same thing by grace made available through faith the summation of your partnership that causes that reality that is available grace makes it available it creates the possibility but your engaging the word accordingly makes it your experience. Grace does not make it your experience. Grace opens it up. It lets you know that this is a possibility contained in God. I've shared it with you that the grace of God is not redemption. No, redemption is a subset of God's grace. God's grace is a generic description of any and everything that only God can provide. It's called his grace. So the anointing is God's grace. His mercy is a dimension of his grace. His love is a dimension of his grace. Any possibility that should be the experience of men that can only be provided for by God is his grace. Grace never makes it your experience. It creates the potential for redemption, for healing, for blessing, for increase for multiplication but then it takes faith and most people have thought that 
the only aspect of faith is to believe and confess no sir mm -mm. Mm -mm. no that's only an aspect of faith faith is a generic name given to everything that involves the partnership of man the first key to partnership is finding out the formula god has provided for receiving that miracle understanding it by the help of the spirit and then taking relevant steps in accordance to what he has said this is what the bible calls faith believing is only an aspect of faith confessing is only an aspect of faith that's not all there is to it if you stop there you will be in total shock you can believe that prosperity is your heritage you can confess it is your heritage and stop and don't engage the other forces and you will remain in poverty and penury forever you can believe is god's desire for you to be great listen carefully you can confess that it is god's desire for you to be great and not engage the other forces of greatness value relationships skill and find out you never rise. are we together now yes so when we learn the systems of the kingdom we are bringing ourselves to the point of faith where we are able to act with understanding and intelligence it is only when our obedience is complete that we commit god's integrity and then he is compelled to make it happen this is how angels work angels don't work at random angels signify things revelations 1 verse 1 the bible says the revelation of jesus christ which he gave unto his servant john he said and he sent it and signified it by his angel angels act in accordance to understanding their action accredits that you are doing something right so they don't just act at random just because they are there no there is what to do that engages them because they are governed they are supervised by the holy spirit it is the office of the holy spirit that supervises the operation of angels they don't just move anyhow and do everything that your eyes are open in the realm of the spirit and you see them near you is no guarantee they will rescue you hallelujah is god speaking to us and so we must find out the things that we need to understand to help us excel brothers and sisters god sees my heart and how much passion that i have to see every one of us rise i will share with us a few things most of them recaps so that we re-evaluate whether we have been practicing these things and then we'll pray are you ready hmm. the first price for doing business with god and making any name and anything that is sustainable on earth please write it down if there is a title for this thing i will call it the price wherever we stop i'm i'm re we are going back to the laws the systems of the kingdom there is no other way to get results than a comprehension a working knowledge and understanding of the systems of the kingdom alongside how we are to engage them this is how results are produced the first price is the price of intimacy the price of intimacy The price of intimacy make a mark in the sands of time God's way if you are unwilling to pay the price to know God the price of intimacy is not the price of praying in tongues it's not just the price of fasting is the price to know God the price to know God the price to know God write it down the price of intimacy is the requirement that causes a man to have a relationship with God Daniel 11 verse 32 thank you Jesus A 
he says but the people that do know know the word know there you've heard me say it again and again it's not just the word aware that you are aware god exists does not mean you know him are we together now pastor alpha knows me pastor femi knows me correct promise knows me kenny they know me but i'm not sure any of them know me as much as a jimmy why because we have spent more time there are many things that have brought us closer and every one of them can only enjoy their confidence about me is based on their knowledge please listen the foundation for your confidence in the kingdom is not just bold face for nothing it is the knowledge of god the bible says it says let not the wise man glory in his wisdom let not um how did he put it now let not let not the strong man glory in his strength but it says let him that glory at glory in this that he understandeth and knoweth me the foundation as i'm saying it now please i want you to check your life there are many hustlers in life they like money but they hate god they like what god can give but they hate him they like church they love miracles they love anointing they love signs and wonders but they hate god they like seed sowing and harvest but they hate god please come pastor alpha let me tell you something i can come to your house and like your bed your bed is not you correct i can like your kitchen i can like your food i can like your suit i can like your tie huh i can like your children i can like your car all those things are related to you but they are not you anointing is not god miracles is not god hear me oh breakthrough is not god fasting is not god prayer is not god bible study is not god god is a person who can be known you can hang around activities that are related to him and convince yourself that because you have actively participated in activities that relate to god it means you know him this is the pride of african men we claim i was born in so 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 time this baptistry we were the ones who dedicated it the first communicants we are the ones who laid hands on them when reinhard bonke came we were the ones who set the canopy and we add all those spiritual accolades to equal knowing god no sir no sir no sir knowing the things of god and knowing god are two different things the bible never said but the people who come to church it never said but the people who drop their tithes and offering it never said the people who are ordained into ministry please listen carefully we are examining the foundation for our results you learn principles without an encounter with god you are just learning jargons as powerful as principles are principles are a derivative of a relationship with a person are we together now yes you can know about me by reading my books but you know me by meeting me my book is supposed to create an appetite for encounter here's what the bible says it says ye search the scriptures you search the scriptures because you think in them by themselves you will find life he said those scriptures testify of me that means reading the bible should stimulate you to want to meet a person much more than opening the bible zodiac books can be opened and you can read scientology and all kinds of books can be opened but if you're reading the book does not translate to meeting a person you will never be great in life but the people that do know their god show me a man who is willing to go through the price of intimacy i don't care whether he went to school or not i don't care whether he came from what background show me a man he may be an orphan oh goodness 
what relationship with the Holy Spirit can bring to a man. Brothers and sisters, he can pick a weak person, a weak person, a weak lady, no father, no mother, no opportunity for a great life, but that you are stupid enough to say, Spirit of the living God, you represent the presence of Jesus. I am willing. I am willing. Like a little child will run to the father. I'm clueless about my life and destiny. I don't know where I'm coming from. I don't know where I'm going to. I don't have an idea of what life is about. But all I want is you. I want to know you. I want to see your face. I want to know you, Lord. I want to touch you. I want to hear your voice. I want to know you. Listen. Life will challenge your knowledge of God. You can know God as a theory. One day. The reason why many believers give up just like some of you now. Let me tell you the mystery of tiredness and living God is because there was no encounter in the first place let's be careful the kind of believers we are producing in church I know when I talk like this people think I'm just being sarcastic no I love the body of Christ but we need to re-examine the quality of the harvest we are bringing because we are bringing believers who don't know God they don't care about God they have zero passion for the things of God they will tell you i'm not called into ministry god has called me into business in other words keep all that one to the business people whoever told you knowing god was for pastors whoever told you knowing god was for men of god and their wives and their children but the people that do know their god you want a harvest of strength you want a life of exploits and triumph the first prize is to know God I can pray for you but I can't know God for you you can benefit from my relationship but brothers and sisters everybody will stand before that Red Sea whether you are married when you get to the Red Sea pastor you will stand there and your wife will stand before her Red Sea it is her faith that will bring her victory you can't intercede for people indefinitely forever no sir are we together but the people who do know their god i talk to pastors and they tell me apostle how do you manage criticism how you do you manage this you know people who like me don't no longer like me and i look at them and i say oh dear you are just like a patient comes to tell the doctor and says look i've been purging i've been coughing and while he's talking the doctor is seeing symptoms of cholera are you seeing that now that's the same way do you know most of our lamentations are a window into something that is wrong most likely we don't know God most likely hmm. that's why you can say father I I thank you I know you will bless me but Lord if you don't bless me anything I do oh, that's your cup of tea that kind of talk is a revelation that there is no encounter because when you know God he infects you like a virus you come to a point where you say lord seeking you for results is over forever i seek you first for who you are results or no results i'm stuck with you i'm stuck with you it's a salt covenant i'm stuck with you forever are we together everybody say the price of intimacy say it say the price of intimacy can you boldly stand please i want you to listen to my message knowing god experientially it's a powerful message knowing god experientially teaches you the system of knowing god let me tell you how god causes men to know him he introduces himself to people and his dimensions in the presence of their challenges and predicaments only challenges can help men know God there's no other way to know him the names of God scattered in the Bible were a revelation of him in the presence of certain challenges most people know God as healer 
just because they saw Ben Hinn praying or they came for miracle service. But the day you stand face to face with a doctor's report that says, Look, madam, um, I'm sorry to tell you this, but it's not like you may not give birth, you cannot give birth. We have done the scan and we realize that you don't even have a womb. He says, Sorry, come again. Say, Look, I'm a consultant, so you are not talking to a stupid person. There is no womb. At that point, you go back and say, God, is this not your word? Let me tell you what it will do to you. Challenges shake us up all of a sudden and make God serious. You know that there is a way you can be trivializing God, but then certain challenges just shake you. Ordinarily, you will not wake up by 2 a.m. in the night, but the reality of what has confronted you forces you to wake up. You don't need alarm clock, you don't need Lipton, you don't need coffee. The pressure and all of a sudden you pray let me tell you something after nine months when you hold that child you are not holding a child you are holding a testimony other people are dancing over a child you are dancing over a testimony so the day they prophesy and say may the god that can open up a door in one year open your door other people are saying amen the moment let me tell you how you receive things in the spirit yes you receive by faith but your past experiences with god help you to receive the newer things he's bringing god looks for something he has done in your life before and connects it to what you are trusting him for are we together when david was fighting goliath remember he drew from the archives of god's faithfulness do you have a name you have given God based on something only you and him know? Or are you just reciting the names that you read in the Bible? Rafa, Jireh, Pastor, there is a name you call your wife. It's none of my business. It's none of our business. That is a product of intimacy. There is a name you call somebody when you are angry. There is a name you call somebody when the times are good. There is a, even as friends. Is that true? What is the name of God that is a product of your knowing him? What name did you give him? Is there a secret name that every time you call, God says, I know this voice. Uh -uh. No one else calls me this name. When Pastor Alpha's wife hears him calling that name, he can't mistake it. She can't mistake it for me. Even if I know the name, it won't sound like that. There is a mystery behind the name. There is a way when people in the Bible said Rafa, there were too many stories that came to their mind. But today you say Rafa, your mind is blank. No experience to connect to Rafa. Oh, Jehovah Jireh, as Abraham. Abraham knows Jehovah Jireh. But we sing it, Jehovah Jireh, my provider. And we jump around and there is no revelation that connects that. That's why Africa has resorted to calling him names in their languages because they found out that it, it has it can help when that gentleman was calling whatever he was saying. I was happy because he was not just reciting a poem, a name that relates to your pain. You don't survive an accident and call God Jire. You call him the deliverer the deliverer so when somebody sees you say how oh, the deliverer is here they say ah, ah. in a prosperity convention say mr man is the dimension of god that was revealed to me that i keep calling what is the name what is the name we've had our fathers call god names that were strange to us we copied it but it's time for us to have a genuine encounter genuine encounter the price of intimacy koinonia please listen to me no level of business acumen no level of education can cover the gap that intimacy was meant to cover but the people that do know their god if you're a pastor please don't do ministry without knowing god you will die like a chicken you will sit down one day on the stage and start crying and the people ask you what is going you say i, I don't know The price of intimacy 
there are certain things about intimacy i want us to understand number one please i'm taking out time to just i want us to understand this thing intimacy takes time you cannot know a man a woman you are willing to spend time with no sir intimacy is a product of time you don't give god five minutes and get benny Hinn's encounter please god is not that cheap my brother my sister listen to me you need to spend time he must mean a lot to you number two god must become priority to have intimacy with him the bible says don't cast your pearl before swine i've said it you don't come to someone's house and then he takes you to his bedroom shows you where he keeps money no sir when you come sometimes you will even stand at the gate sometimes you will enter and stay inside sometimes you will stay at the parlor you will not even have access to the kitchen but there are certain people while all that is happening the child can run and even enter the bedroom the price for intimacy i look at the lives of people believers yes we are born again yes we are filled with the holy spirit but when i look at our lives i don't see priority passion for god is contagious when a brother likes a lady no matter how he tries to hide it his roommate will know is that true the roommate will say you just spoke to five people but this sixth person the joy at which you used to call that lady this joy is not natural correct you are hugging everybody after service and then the way you hug that lady the brother said this hug is too generous for just brotherly kindness no what is there's more to this i say it's true i've been looking at her passion passion has a presence don't lie to us that you love god when we cannot see the passion Passion has a presence. I hunger and thirst for you in a dry and weary land. All I want is you. I hunger and thirst for you. I hunger and thirst for you in a dry and weary land. For all I want. The third key I'm sharing with you for intimacy to be established, one is you must be ready to invest your time. You give God five minutes of your time, you get five minutes worth of knowledge. Second is priority. Third is your willingness to lay down. The, the Bible calls it the power to lay down. This is where some of you will not like me now. This is where many believers will not like me now. Because our generation has been indoctrinated that you can eat your cake and have it. No, sir. Go and ask anybody, even an occultist. You don't eat your cake and have it. You cannot know God without a sacrifice i'm not talking money a sacrifice fasting is a sacrifice prayer is a sacrifice are we together studying the bible is a sacrifice we don't like this language at all yet we want power we want results sacrifice there are times that on account of your intimacy with god you just want to eat and the word of the lord comes to you Go on a three-day fast. Oh God, which breakthrough is coming now? God said, this is not the issue of breakthrough. You are about, I'm about to reveal, I'm about to open you up to certain encounters. And I said, God, this is not flamboyant enough. If that you told me that I, after these three days fast, land will manifest from anywhere and come. It's a worthy investment to fast. But wh why will I fast to know you? What is the big deal about you when I'm looking for land? And God will say, you see it. You see your heart. That's how I hold my hands again. Everybody says sacrifice. 
I am amazed at the difficulty that believers go through to lay down the slightest thing. Slightest thing. So this suit, you discuss with God for one year before it leaves. You are carnal and you don't love him. It's the truth. Empty your account. I curse that, that devil. You argue for two years first and finish the money till 10,000. I say, God, I will lay it down. God says, just leave. I will tell you when to do it again. Are you willing to lay down? Jesus said, I have the power to lay down. Let me show you maturity in the spirit. When a man has gotten to a point where there is nothing you cannot lay down. Abraham, take now thy son, thy only son whom thou lovest. Many of us will agree to fast for 400 days than to lay down something for him. Everybody says sacrifice. 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 When God makes that demand and you are willing to sacrifice, you will know him. Let me tell you, I submit to you with all humility. This man standing before you is a testimony of sacrifice. Ask God, there is nothing I cannot lay down for him. Oh, it's a joke. Before he finishes talking, it will go. I have exercised myself to see the vanity of anything outside of God. You must lay down. The Bible says, love not the world. Usually, it's those who hate money that preach that message. No. It's all those who are poor and broke. They preach it as a consolation to their poverty. No, sir. You should not preach that message until you are really rich. Love not the world or the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, he didn't say don't have those things, an affinity to it. God gave you a car and the car took his place. God gave you a wife and the wife took his place. God gave you children, they took his place. God gave you a, a job paying six figures and he lost you in that job. Is God speaking to someone here? God increased your CGPA and that's the end of it. God connected you to a good brother, a good sister. God gave you a business idea. And with that idea, he lost you. No, sir. No, sir. Sacrifice. The Lord, for as long as I live, in life and in death, you remain my priority. And that if need be, I will lay aside anything. If God tells me, lay aside koinonia now, brothers and sisters, is with tears we hold the last valedictory service. I will hold the last service. I don't care what prophet comes from where and says, Apostle, I think you are not hearing God well. I will apologize when God changes his mind, but for now, koinonia closed. Apostle, what do you do with the lives you are blessing? I don't know. Ask the one who sent me, but koinonia closed. There is a way you can do ministry. You have carried your reputation and your life and added to it. When God says shift left, God says, and then leave me where? Are we together? I want you to look at your life now. Let me show you why money is not coming to your life. Leave, leave business. We are coming there. But we are examining why there are some of us, regardless of our prayer, Satan enters our life anyhow. Do you know why? Because the lust in your heart needs to be purged beyond imagination. Your attachment to things. You, God would dare not make a demand of anything. What sort of thing is that? Who gave you the life? Many of you would have noticed that from August, August till now, I'm not sure I've gone from over four ministrations. Cancelled almost everything. It's just been maybe one or two ministrations per month and the rest. Very unusual because that's the instruction God gave. And I said, that's it. Let me tell you, there are certain people that I would have wanted to be in their meetings with all my heart. But I love God. There's nothing I know that moves the heart of God than him seeing something you ordinarily love. But you say, Lord, it is for you. He says, that's it. This is what I'm looking for. If this handkerchief is five naira and I tell you I brought this handkerchief from the UK are we together I bought it 
whatever amount one pound and i carried it from the uk and i brought they wanted to collect it but i hid it back immigration wanted to harass me but i said this is for you if i give you will you give somebody for one thousand it's not about the sacrifice have increased the value of it there is no rising in the spirit when you are holding on to everything jealousy anger huh? all kinds of things please let's re-examine these things if we really want results god declared that it's a year of triumph but it's your heart with him is your heart with him apostle all i want is just pray for me let a husband come keep quiet oh sister and listen to what i'm telling you because it's not just the issue of pray for husband god has already seen the wickedness in your heart and god is saying no way you must love me first before i carry my son that i've labored on to carry and give you oh god just bless me i need to be a millionaire I've seen this thing in my dream and God said if you don't listen to my servant you will, it will remain in the dream there. It takes hunger for God. How many people have made money and left God? Have you seen people like that? Anybody that says money does not give you an option is a poor and a broke person who doesn't know anything about money. Because when you have money there are few things you will pray about. Correct? Many prayer requests are tied to finances. And let me be honest with you, there is a level in your life that you get to where you don't think about money again. You may not have everything, but you get to a point where all your basic needs can be met to the degree you want them to be met. At that point, that's how you see how carnal and mundane your heart is. Because there's nothing else. I understand praying for six hours because of the emergency that is on you. But when His Majesty has lifted your life, beyond certain realms that's when you will know and prove whether he's really lord in your life my number one prayer to god every time is oh god for as long as i live may nothing win my heart so much enough to be able to push you and say god wait behind just because a door of ministry was open wait behind oh god benny Hinn is calling me wait behind billy graham gave me the privilege to see him before he dies wait behind bill gates just called me and he said he wants to bless a man of god on earth and favor located me no sir no sir lord make me your priority make me your priority make me your priority this was the secret of david make me your priority priority means you mean the world to me you mean the world to me brothers and sisters get my passion for god i pray that god will, will whatever it is that god did to me i pray that it will happen to you because if truly speaking you want to do business with god you must love him beyond things things beyond things beyond things i love him with all my heart i love him my heart is open before him he's the god of my salvation i love him with all my heart i will lay down anything for him anything anything i really mean it i really mean it don't think i'm just talking i fear god i will lay down anything reputation nonsense if you can lay down anything in his presence and go down on your knees and say lord this is for you i lay down my pride i lay down my achievements oh i have a phd in so 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 and so just calm down first too lord i hand it over to you there's nothing god loves like surrender 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 it's yours that's a language that is music to his ears the anointing lord you gave me is yours the grace you gave me is yours and while people are clapping for you in the open apostle joshua selman you come before him and say lord without you i can go nowhere ah, but apostle tell the truth as anointed as you are without you hmm. the wife of david looked at him 
and said you are dancing you are you are you are misrepresenting yourself you don't know you are a king before god and david said me you don't know my track record with this god i've told god one day to me leaving you please if it means me taking my life let it be that i didn't finish my assignment but that you remain my priority i surrender all everything i give to you i'm withholding nothing listen to the song before you sing it lord i surrender to you everything I give to you. I'm withholding nothing. Withholding Listen, nothing. the key to dying, killing your reputation, and the, the key to entering your rest is to hand over your life to God. I don't have any reputation, no brothers and sisters. My reputation is God. You know, there are times that sometimes I chat with the media people and they tell me, you know, someone, all these people that write all kinds of things, sometimes they send mails, sometimes sarcasm, people say all kinds of things. I say, Apostle, your reputation, and I laugh. I say, ah, reputation died since when? If I had a reputation of my own, wouldn't I be under pressure right now? Let me tell you what is causing stress. The fight to protect our reputation. That's it so that people will not think i'm poor let me prove a point and god is saying what point come on to me come on to me i need people to know that me i'm not i'm not just a i'm not i'm not a poor man i i need to go and buy a trouser and god says no i am your reputation i am your inheritance listen let me teach you people the secret of rest there are many pastors wearing themselves out i need crowd so that they will know that me too i'm anointed if if a man can receive nothing except it is given to him from god i learned to rest in him he truly is my rest <laughs> it's my rest that's why the ministry has been designed in such a way that whether i'm here or not god will be glorified it can't be around me no sir if i die now god forbid ah yes you will just cry for seven days you will try to pray and raise me back to life maybe two or three days after three days i guarantee you'll be tired small and you just say Toh, what do we do they say Toh, let's just give god praise somebody will have a dream and see me saying please bury me jerry and leave me in peace ah but he said you will not die while you are talking all that nonsense i'm in heaven happy and rejoicing and looking at you and saying instead of crying for me you better go and listen to my messages and make a meaning out of your life for for me to live is christ but to die is gain look at the stress that is killing you is it not because of ego talk to me 90 percent of the depression that is killing us in this life is an attempt to protect our image we say and i need to guard my image. what nonsense image ask a man who built an image that got smashed into pieces he built 90 feet of his image protected by bowing down god says no but those who enter the fire to protect the image of god god says i come to protect you brothers and sisters i give you an advice carry your reputation like a sacrifice hand it over to god and enter your rest this night this is a deliverance for someone now is that true yes the forty thousand house rent is killing you you don't have the money but to go and meet your friend and squat you are saying no i need them to know please enter your rest pack out of that place and go and give yourself peace instead of dying to maintain your reputation they've been seeing me wearing only one shoe i need to get another one nobody has been seeing you people have their problems it is your it is your your the punishment that comes from not handing over everything to god
I'd like you to pray as you are seated and say, Lord, I am tired of carrying a load you told me to give you. I hand it over. Apostle, but people are always asking me, when will I marry? It will kill you. Don't let depression kill you. Hand everything over to God and enter your Sabbath. Enter your rest. A man can receive nothing until it is given to him from God. Pray, Lord, make me your priority. I'm willing to commit time to knowing you. I'm willing to commit to surrender everything and make you a priority. This obsession I have for marriage, this obsession for children, this obsession for job, this obsession for power, this obsession for ministry and rema and miracles is taking your place. Return back to your throne, oh God. If this is all I share tonight, it's worth it. Where would I be if you left me now? Where would I be if you left me now? Where would I be? That's my testimony. If you left you waited. You waited. You waited. Listen, where would I be if he left me? This song means a lot to me because you see, brothers and sisters, he is the invisible force behind men who command results. You don't see him, you only see them. So chances are that they are the ones who you can shake. They are the ones who you can sow to. But every great man knows that behind him is an invisible and mighty God. Unmovable. I may shake, but he's unmovable, unshakable. But the people that do know their God shall defy status quo. They shall be strong. And they shall do exploits the first prize while revisiting the mysteries that make for greatness brothers and sisters let's return to the place of intimacy let's return to the place of intimacy this is a call return to the place of intimacy spend time with God draw strength from him talk to him don't hide anything from him open your all to him it will be foolish and silly to hide anything from him everything carry your pain carry your tears learn to spend time with god alone hold on please there are some of you as i look at you you don't yet have the passion for god to go on a personal retreat no you are churchy you love god you don't drink you don't steal you don't womanize you don't follow men but you don't love god you can't go by yourself and lock your house and say please i need to spend time some of you the last time you did this was a long time ago ministry had it is place in your life listen you must learn the power of retreating even if it's just for a day do it lock yourself lord i come before you you are the god of my strength i am open and naked before you these are my crowns these are my pains I bring them before you and you fellowship with him and he talks to you ah my son I love you correct this add this to your life I'm introducing this begin to see things this way and you come out of there with fire and grace and people look at you and your life is an unending compendium of wonder wonder unfolding when a man gasses out is a sign that he has left the secret place in a long time freshness is one of the characteristics of the secret place 
Look at me. Whether you are working class or you are a student, you are a father, you are a mother, you are a husband or a wife, I'd like you to write it if you are writing. I must create time alone, underline alone with God. MOG, create time more with God because all you have to serve the people is what you receive in the secret. Thank you, Jesus. That's how it works. You want to experience a, a life of unending victory. It starts that way. It starts that way. It always starts with him. Not principles. We are coming to principles. But him. Not just an encounter. An encounter can be a one-time experience. But intimacy is fellowship. Is partnership. Staying remaining with him where he becomes your priority sister a brother comes into your life and meets you madly in love with god he won't do any how to you like that because he met when he meets you idol uh, idol carelessly moving around waiting for a man that's when he does everything for you he comes to find you in worship can we see by this time oh i would love to but i, I need to spend some time with god ah, which god so, well that's that's what i do i buy yourself you are behaving as if you're a child and you, you just see that as a sign from god that this is going to be a wicked husband you don't need to go and ask god again whether he's the will of god god answered you there your passion forced an answer from him are we together i love god i love jesus i love him I like you to pray and say, Lord, help me love you. Help me love you genuinely. The price of intimacy. Sabra kata kosi keti yalakata. Brentis kalepra hasuzi amana kalatusi. The price of intimacy. The price of intimacy. Let no westernization preach you out of this, my brother, my sister. The price of intimacy let education not preach you out of this let a job let money let marriage let children not preach you out of this way before ministry was he was and he is and will ever be in the beginning God in the beginning God in the beginning God I must become alpha and no man of your life for anything in between to make sense. Please pray. Oh, I re I reestablish my covenant of intimacy. For Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry. Yes, you are the cup that will run dry. Other things may run dry. Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry. Not in my life. Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry. Hold on. It's impossible to marry a bad woman when your heart is connected to god you attract what looks like you you leave god and you are doing all kinds of rubbish the devil will bring jezebel to your life that will tear your head and tear your anointing into pieces it's impossible to marry a bad man all these men that drive you to church they leave you somewhere sisters i'm talking to you they all go and do koinonia pray for us oh mother Teresa. as soon as they are rounding up they are there by that place where they are selling something. They are waiting for you. They pick you and say, I love you. Nonsense. Let me deliver you now. If there are such kind of people in your life, you better send them a text and tell them, get out of my life so that God himself will bring my husband or my wife. Hallelujah. Anybody that hates your God and likes you is a liar. No, sir. You come under my roof, you serve what I'm serving. You serve who I'm serving. You can't be under my roof and have your own rules. No, sir.
it is from your intimacy you will raise your children you can't give what you don't have it is from your intimacy as a pastor let me tell you when you love god and you hunger after him that fire con the people catch that fire and they love god too you tell people to fast you are eating secretly you buy fish you buy yam you buy whatever people are laboring and they are fasting you will eat and belt and dress and come and round up the meeting intimacy intimacy i'd like you to think in one minute what is that one thing that is currently fighting the position of god in my life think don't pray think what is it what is that one thing that if god makes a demand now honestly i can't give it what is it some of us is our reputation i keep talking about this reputation my class I am this, I am that, the power of my hand. Hey. I have seen mighty people fall like a leaf overnight because God, they ignored God's assistance in their life. You can be a CEO of XYZ today and be a billionaire and crash back to zero. Is God waking somebody up today? Please return to the secret place. Return to the place where he is priority. Return to the age long and age old mystery of retreats. Where you take periodic times out with God. And just spend and cry before him. And say Lord thank you. That you fast for 100 days does not mean you love God. It can just mean that you are a strong person. Congratulations for that. But it's not equal to intimacy. You're all I want. You're all I've ever needed. You're all to hold the hand of your neighbor and pray for him and say lord keep your love burning in him keep your love burning in her don't pray for yourself pray for your neighbor lord keep your love burning that's the investment of prayer I'm making for my neighbor whether you're a newcomer or not lord keep your let my neighbor prioritize you my neighbor loves you but you are not such a big deal to him or to her but lord walk on his heart tonight walk on her heart tonight hallelujah hallelujah are you blessed are you blessed these are the mysteries let me teach you one more hmm. the second prize that i want to teach you tonight wherever we stop we'll pray we'll continue next week i'm taking this thing because i really want us to understand the second prize is the price of submission to authority listen the price of submission to authority write it down mm. the price the embarrassing ego stinging but destiny molding price of submission to authority the mysteries that turn people's lives into wonders the price of submission to authority hmm. nobody promotes himself in this kingdom you cannot promote yourself you cannot accredit yourself nobody makes himself a professor 
nobody makes himself a doctor is that true pastor alpha you have supervisors correct mm -hmm. no student marks his project and say i passed correct no in the kingdom listen the system of rising is such that it's not only god that approves you alone men must approve you if not you will never rise listen to me your approval is not just in the hands of god alone it's in the hands of men too mm. jesus knew this that's why he had to look for john the baptist what will the son of god be doing the son of god look for john the baptist for what for what the word that created the heavens and the earth searches for john the baptist when john sees him says he says behold the lamb that's enough to make his head big and say oh so you know then it means i will go back he said no suffer it to be so it's an ordinance it's a secret permit it to be so i know that i created you but suffer it to be so that all scriptures will be fulfilled that there be no legal basis for my remaining small listen i know that god has approved you but have men approved you you will think it does not matter go and find out those who made kings in the bible whether the spirit appeared as a ghost god chose them men anointed them kings is it in your bible how god anointed jesus but did, did it come like that no samuel how long will you weep over saul seeing that i rejected him go and take your horn i want to use david but you have refused to cooperate with me i have approved him from heaven but david cannot rise because the man that will pour the oil and approve him refused God approves a man as a king and on earth the authority to accredit him is still negotiating and because of that that person remains grounded listen Saul the son of Kish was looking for his father's donkey when he met an authority that could approve and he called him he said come go up I will tell you what is in your heart and all of a sudden he anointed Saul and poured oil on him and his life changed whoever lied to you that when you say to hell with men you will prosper the Bible says believe in the Lord your God you want to be established wonderful but if you want to make it in this life brothers and sisters you must submit to God's scriptural pattern of authority your alignment to God's scriptural chain of authority decide how and what flows to you your alignment to god's scriptural chain of authority determines how and what flows to you there are prophets in the bible who were preordained by god to be prophets there were other prophets who were made prophets nowhere in the bible it was never written that they should be prophets amos was not a prophet he was a farmer he was an agriculturist but a man saw him and made him a prophet elisha was not a prophet oh i hope you know that when elijah took his girdle and slapped it on elisha while he was farming elisha started following him the result was that he became a prophet. Agabus, a man in the Bible called Agabus, who gave birth to daughters. The Bible never tells us that they were serious spiritually, but because they were born, they came out of a loin, the loins of a man who, for whatever reason, was a prophet. The old daughters were prophets too. your submission to authority is a mystery that governs promotion ask anybody who is honest enough to admit 
and tell them the day they began to discern authority what happened in their lives that's why you see those who dishonor the body of christ will never rise you've heard me say this all those who make it a point of duty they insult every man of god they insult every church once it's not your pastor everybody is an object of there is a sin that you can do against the body of christ a man cannot just sin against god alone you can sin against the body of christ and the bible says jealousy is the rage of a man i cannot come and insult a jimmy's wife and expect him to smile no. the first understanding of authority is your submission to the body not just to man of god not just to spiritual fatherhood your submission to the body the multifaceted dimension of god that is scattered in the body your ability to acknowledge that the body of christ is a compendium of infinite possibilities regardless of what your unique biases are when you love the body you are ready to access the deep things in the spirit god will never do business with you when you hate his body there are people who are fasting giants but their cynicism against the body mention any name of any man of god they have something to say mention it, they, that attitude of sarcasm and they wonder why regardless of fasting and prayer nothing comes the body the bible says for this cause not discerning the body many are weak for this cause many are sick this cause many do sleep as a ministry we have clearly defined our position over the body i love the body of christ you will never hear me open my mouth and talk about any man of god and any ministry it doesn't mean i believe everything i have my reservations but i love the body a wounded bride is still a bride if a woman injures her hand on her wedding day does it stop her from marrying that woman you insult every time call the church is someone's wife submission to the body submission to the body that you discern that this body of christ is a compendium of possibilities the blessing of God always comes to you through alignment to authority. The blessing of God, please everyone listen. The blessing of God will always come to your life through alignment. Write this down. I learned this from Dr. Mike Mudok. The primary purpose of authority is provision, protection, and promotion. Write it down. The primary purpose of authority, the primary purpose of authority is provision, protection, and promotion. Provision. When you submit to authority, you have access to the promotion that that authority commands. When you submit to authority, you have access to the protection. We call it a covering. And when you submit to authority, you have access to promotion. Are we blessed? You can never promote yourself you can never accredit yourself listen when you see people submit to authority let me tell you why people hate submission come pastor alpha there are many people what they are doing is pseudo submission you know what we call pseudo submission one leg in one leg out you are not exactly there but you are just there who is this guy well he's a very he's a senior colleague he's just a brother there you are you are you would never rise that way no way God is not a fraud star. You are in it or you are out. I will never forget a gentleman who walked up to me one day and said, Sir, I've been looking at you as if he's toasting me. I've been watching you. I've been watching your life, sir. And, uh, you know, I just feel I need to come close to you. I told this, get out of here. Don't, don't waste my time. 
go and walk on your pride in the secret place when your discernment is complete and you understand that not all human beings are pure human beings then when you submit to a man you don't submit to a body you submit to a system are we together if you fly a plane somebody drives it even if it is your jet somebody drives it the jet is guaranteed to carry you but not all, everybody will be a driver that's how it is in life listen no matter how you fear god and no matter how you love god there are things that you will get based on connection you will pray in the secret place god will refer you to his structure the bible says the church was built in a very strange way it says christ being the chief cornerstone after that he said it was on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets not just by name then the body was built there are certain graces when you don't encounter in your life you will never rise i know this looks like human worship but these are the secrets that other people who are not very smart oh, they just know how to encounter it the body of christ do you have that discernment i've shared with you how we receive the grace for long life we transported the grace of for long life officially and brought it to this ministry yeah i know how we got it when we stopped at that place that border between quara state and equity state there is a strange mystery that goes on there 142 132 125 healthy ah we stopped quickly we went to the baba there we said sir there is a grace for long life here we wanted the man laugh he said kneel down he didn't say are you a pastor because when you go as a pastor you stay outside when you submission demands a stripping of whatever robe or regalia and a an acknowledgement that's what we did on a very good day he said sir i'm just returning from a ministry where there are miracles Baba, do you know me? Cannot even speak English. We got, we had to look for an interpreter. And he spoke. Kneel down, Jerry. Young people. We knelt down. And this man began to speak. I told you. I met the wife of the 132 year old man who died. I think she was like maybe 120 something. You would think she's 60. And I told her, I said, ah. When the woman saw, she tapped me. She said, follow me. I didn't care where I was going, no. No matter what I saw, I would stay there because I know what brought me there. If I was cynical, I said, Madam, where are you taking me? I'm a born again believer. No, go there first. She showed me the picture of her youth with the 132 year old man. Afterwards, we told her that they've prayed for us, but since you are the wife, two have become one. The man is dead, you are alive, so he's still alive. And the woman removed her shoes. Said, kneel down. Ah, what do you think I'll do? Hey. Submission. Submission. Let me tell you what many of us will do. <laughs> Mama, just pray. Is that kneeling down? That's pride. You are not receiving a sword. Kneel down. One of the biggest enemy of submission is that we think submission is a way of demeaning our own self now truly speaking do you know there are people who do that they purposely demean you in the name of submission that's wrong there are insecure men and women of god scouting around for anybody they can call son or daughter to increase their accolades not because they understand what they have and they will purposely humiliate you especially in the open to show look jesus was with the people who were submissive to him but you did not even know who jesus was they had to use a kiss to identify him i choose to be like him you don't have to move around and when people are there you say oh yeah pastor Alpha, shift let them know i'm the one <laughs> when they know you can come back I watch people who hate submission having passion for sons and daughters they hate submission they hate acknowledging authorities 
they come for a meeting and see a, a man of God that deserves honor, uh, all protocols duly observed. Ah, uh, Pastor Femi, aye. Is that greeting? That is, that, is, that is the attitude of pride that drives grace down. Look, if you are anointed, you are anointed. It's as simple as that. If it's not there, it's not there. Are we together? Authority. I can share with you encounters after encounters. One of the things I love about the leaders and the people in this ministry, and that's why you see that many of them have been able to reproduce this grace, is because they understand submission. Truly speaking, I tell you, I am very proud of the workers in this ministry. I am proud of the heads of department. They understand submission. Submission is not a way of managing a man of God's insecurity. Listen, never form a team where the loyalty of the people is questionable. Let me give you an advice. If I want to create, come, come, come darling. If I want to establish a company, come. One, two, three, four. If I notice your loyalty is questionable, I will sack you. Go out. Where we? Oh, but you are you are gifted. Just carry your gift and go away with it. You only deal ruthlessly with rebellion. Listen, I'm telling you, people will interpret it as insecurity, but it is irresponsible for a leader to see rebellion and let it go deal with it are we together yes i will not let anybody to be close to me who does not listen to me and acknowledge the authority of the lord of or on my life over him i will not i don't hate you i won't fight you but you certainly will not be close to me you know why because you will not receive and you will corrupt the passion of others from coming to receive because they will say you are close why are you not getting this result i says here yeah, this thing is it not we that are close to them we 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 that are if me i'm close like this have you ever seen me heal the sick so you should be doubting and I say, ah, you mean it that anointing is dead. for i didn't say he's fake oh i only said am i not close to him why has it not come on me take those kind of people out of your life i'm i'm talking to you sincerely take them out of your life anybody that comes close to you as I, I don't mean everybody but as somebody a man of god or somebody that god has lifted to a measure not all of them will submit to you in terms of fatherhood but they should be able to acknowledge what god is doing in your life enough to listen when there is time to listen are we together now yes you're in worship team here and your music director is talking to you and say sir like i read in the book mm -mm, keep quiet you do it again, you do it tomorrow. If I'm you, he will never sing here again. No way. It's more than holding the mic and a good voice. You don't listen. That's how one day they'll say, sing after two times transpose. And you invent your own. Everybody transposes, only you. And you are just dancing because people are clapping. You are dancing. And you mess up. Team spirit only happens when there is an agreement to submit. Are you listening to what I'm saying? That's why many people never rise. all blessings come they flow from a scriptural chain of authority a few weeks ago pastor alpha went to stand in for me for a meeting and a number of our people and after the meeting one of the mothers there sent me a text and said apostle you have reproduced yourself verbatim in these people and i smiled i said they deserve it they deserve it one of our dear ones here when he was in the school of ministry you know this was somebody that god helped and one time he went towards their graduation time he went to minister somewhere and my goodness it was an experience there was such an avalanche of the presence and the power of god and he returned back he was saying ah this and that and that and i told him when you listen and you submit you have it everybody say submission to authority learn it today learn it we have to stop here but if just doing these two things alone the the bible says god called abraham he says a lot went with him is that in your bible lots did what 
He didn't say Abraham said, Lord, let's go. Lord said, I'm going. I'm sure Abraham said, you better go back. And Lord went with him. God called Elijah and Elisha went with him. Elisha had sons of the prophets who paid school fees. And they were receiving lectures from a lecturer. But Elisha said, since I didn't pay anything, I will humble myself and follow. He was the one who poured water on the hands of Elisha. I'm not saying to compel people to worship you. Please don't do that. I, I know that the leaders in this ministry will not do that. Don't just make. There are times that people do some unnecessary worship. You know you have not gotten to the level that demands that. You stop it consciously. Even as I am now. There are things. There are some mothers old enough to be my mother. Old enough. More older than my mother. They will see me and they want to kneel down. I will be stupid at my age and level. To allow a woman kneel down like that. Say she acknowledges me. No. If I try to carry her up and she refuses, I kneel down with her too. That's a wise person. So, fatherhood is not a way of massaging your ego to watch people worship you. While they do it, you make sure the crowd is watching. No. God will punish you for playing with people's lives like that. But brothers and sisters, there are mysterious benefits to submission. One of it is the flow of grace. One of it is the flow of grace believe this oh believe this pastor jimmy was telling me yesterday that he was talking with someone a meeting that i'm going for next year somewhere and then he was talking with the person the person had had me mention his name and he you know they got in touch and he was saying sir i've had apostle talk about you so so much and i was so touched yesterday he's just hearing it now a jimmy was talking to me and he said that he told the man he said sir your life and your ministry is about to shift in a way that you will never imagine when he said it i looked at him i said this is somebody who is my friend he's so close to me but that ability to discern some of you you know why god never lets you come close to a man of god your proximity for familiarity your your propensity for familiarity is too bad Away together someone came one day to see me and when he came he saw me eating corn and he was laughing he needed a something he saw me i was eating corn and he was talking he said yeah you should allow me eat before i pray for him i said don't be foolish didn't you come for prayer does eating the corn does anointing flow through corn or through whatever if if you are coming to listen keep quiet and listen otherwise please walk out of here You can be sleeping on the same bed with your miracle and lack of submission. There is no woman here who should refuse submitting to her husband. Any woman that refuses submitting to her husband, I don't care whether the husband is a man of God or not. Listen, ladies, if you are about to get married, make sure you are willing to submit to your husband. I am not a I am I will not advocate oppressing women I don't do that but all this women alive movement and all this gender equality thing there is a balance to gender equality I don't oppress ladies I have a great deal of honor and respect for ladies but all this nonsense of what a man can do a woman can do also is is deception no I don't look down on women but the correct position of a woman's victory is under authority. Please learn this. Rebellious, noisy, mouth ladies that cannot submit to authority have signed for a life of defeat and pain. Listen, it's true. Submission to authority. That was the problem with Jezebel. It was obvious I have submitted to her and not the other way around. Because it was her that was running the nation. When Eve violated the law of submission, there was access to the serpent. God causes you to submit to protect you. I look at people who are in this ministry, but they are not really connected genuinely because I do not see the grace finding expression in their lives. There are people who have never come here. It's not about coming to lie down the altar necessarily. It's not even about sowing into the life of a man of God, carrying his handkerchief, carrying... Some of those things sometimes can just be ritualistic, really. But the truth of it is a connection. Connection is based... The Bible says as 
as um, face answers to face there is a connection genuine connection genuine honor whether in the secret or in the open you will never sometimes before hands are ever laid on you you will walk in that grace and reproduce it verbatim why have you not entered certain breakthroughs that you see it is because submission is not genuine submission is not genuine praise the lord first fatherhood but then second a recognition of people that have gone ahead of you you notice sometimes when i'm counseling people when someone comes is talking about issue finance or breakthrough or this i say please go to a jimmy sometimes they can see a jimmy laughing there and they just go and stand this guy and i say you remain poor and broke there because you are not willing to listen this guy you see carries a strange grace for wealth and abundance i've worked with Ejimi for years that grace on him came from his late mother yes my first genuine watch genuine watch not all those things genuine watch then the mom gave me from uk that watch never spoiled i sold it painfully nobody invents mantles they are transferred so if you ever see it on someone it left somewhere to come there don't trivialize it the men may be young but the mantles are ancient it's like water please help it's like water do you know the water on earth is older than everybody it keeps recycling that means somebody drank it abraham drank the water you are drinking isaac because it only recycles the crops can come out the corn i'm eating abraham they eat it but the water in the sea oh no come on that's how mantles are this healing grace nobody invents it nobody even if you receive directly from god to you it was an encounter but when god shows you the dynamics it was a connection i've taught you on systems nobody will ever walk on pros in prosperity insulting kenneth copeland start from anywhere in the world the mantles keep connecting themselves until it gets to the final person kenneth copeland is not carrying a mantle of he is the system on earth to the body that represents that possibility you want to walk in the anointing and in the healing ministry start from any man of god you keep connecting until it gets to benihin now currently you see that you don't invent a road that has been found there are people who are millionaires today they are not smart 90 percent of what we teach in business schools they don't know anything about it but they were just stupid enough to discern there is an ancient mystery i've shared with you my story remember the two women Ejimi, that i bought sugar cane for two women that were wearing tattered dresses i bought paid sugar cane for them a woman that cannot afford 50 naira now blesses me and says, my son forever walk upon gold that's what the woman told me forever walk upon gold I believe I received a strange I don't believe that woman was a pure human being I believe they were angels in disguise I don't believe that woman was a pure human being I have had many encounters like that but this one was strange <sighs> my life opened overnight the race is not to the swift I'm showing you how these systems work in the kingdom I've shared with you how I went to Canaan land to go and sow a seed to Bishop David Oedeko. When I finished all of that, I came out. When I came out, please help this lady. I came out. I, would, I had already been working in signs and wonders. Boarded flights by myself to go and sow a seed to a man of God. Most of you do it, but it's not genuine. You just do it for the sake of it. Listen more greatness produced from alignment that it will be done from knowledge 
more greatness will come from alignment in the days to come than it will come from knowledge i will teach you about knowledge i teach you about skill but brothers and sisters there are ancient dimensions that are not subject to just knowledge you can enter a reality before your mind catches up i remember when people i didn't used to work very strongly in the prophetic you know here and there god will help me but it wasn't anything serious i remember when I was browsing William Branham, people were lambasting that guy, saying nobody's carrying his anointing, nobody's carrying all these insults, they insult men of God. Be careful. I remember watching his video one night, early in the morning, and I just sat down. Tears were rolling down my eyes. I saw the humility and the compassion from that man. I said, how could people, this guy was a thousand times more humble than me and yet people keep talking about him and all of a sudden i felt it was like something on my head it took like 30 minutes it was coming down the next meeting i went to it was like a joke i started seeing names on people over people's head i said this is strange don't ignore submission you will pay for it i know you went to school but let me tell you there are people who read let me not call the name of any course had that class but were connected to an ancient mantle that can manipulate realities and today they are working in nmpc they've been working in nmpc for decades with a past degree they've been sacking anybody but the grace that brought there still keeps them you would think they've been sleeping around no sir listen before you submit to an authority, discern the graces at work. Discern the forces at work. Discern it. Don't just sit down and say, I am this, I am this. Whether you call, you say, Papa, you say whatever, you will never discern it. Discern it. How you know you are genuinely connected is that the results start reproducing in your life. Sometimes in a shocking way, let me tell you, if we send a dog from koinonia dog d-o-g i carry this handkerchief and tie it on that dog i promise you and i send it for a crusade people will rise up from wheelchairs and the sick the power of god will flow it's not about the dog it's about what he's carrying there are some things that are not just based on your personal work are you getting what i'm saying now god said it's the year of triumph he knows that there are many things you don't know and if he's to wait just on some things that you need to know to prosper the natural way will take years before you really understand it but there is a system when he said it there was already a provision but you are refusing to tap into it because of pride pride I see favor every day in my life every day is one thing I know if you ever are looking for the grace for favor and you have been looking around and you are not getting it you are a liar and you are calling God a liar and God will not be happy with you because that grace is more than available it's just that people don't know it There is nothing I'm wearing from my head to my toe that I bought with my money. No, plus my stockings, head to toe. Favor is real. You can sit and argue it in pride. Say it doesn't matter and sit down there. But you can believe and say, but Lord, this is possible. Your life changes automatically. Do you believe this thing I'm sharing with you? I've taught you two things today the price to develop intimacy and the price of genuine connection genuine connection genuine connection you come for koinonia here you see manifestations of the spirit there are people like that they have reproduced it everywhere frankly speaking they can tell you i'm in a meeting say i didn't even pray honestly i just said father we give you thanks 
and people started for even then they will go back and say hey, but god thank you for covering for me it's alignment. it's alignment let me tell you how to know people don't walk by faith they are vague in their expectations vagueness is a sign you are not sure the result will come the bible says give us he told you who to give number two he says this day when what our daily bread give us this day our daily bread specificity is very important in manifesting faith so that when the result comes you are sure that this is what I release my faith for is God speaking to us when you package your physical environment without the requisite mental upgrade and transformation you have only flattered yourself it's like throwing your money in a basket because everything will disappear please hear me ladies and gentlemen especially for we who are young i know that we live in a society that mounts pressure on a gentleman and a lady to show uh -uh, you finished school four years ago till now you can't even buy a nice jean and so we go out of our way to try to paint our physical world to look like a reality that we have upgraded ourselves into and we keep you notice that you keep rising up and falling rising up and falling your physic you try to fake it your mindset brings you back that's what happened to many of our loved ones i've told people why fake something that can be real you don't have to fake it when it can be real brothers and sisters hear me you may be in a small one room right now no carpet no recharge card no nothing you are using a, a simple phone that you don't even know the name there's no name on it you just bought it somewhere don't allow that disturb you if you can take the word of god the beautiful thing about your mind is that it's not limited by time and space continue to upgrade yourself in the name of jesus i may have gary today but i will feed nations and you study the word of god and it's constructing your mind there is he that stirred and yet increases. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. Ah, so an attachment for things is why money doesn't come. You write it in the name of Jesus. I have no attachment to things. When God brings them, money is a slave and a servant, never to become a God and a master. I am a giver. And then you study again, and God is able to make all grace abound towards you. So that he having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work so it's god that can make all grace abound that means i don't need to worry about how the results will happen it is god's office that allocating how the physical results will manifest are we together you begin to study you see the bible says love never fails that means if there is anything that is failing in my life when i add love to it i can turn the results around so you construct your mindset let me tell you the first thing that will happen to you when your mind begins to transform your environment will start fighting you because immediately your friends and your environment your thinking will start making you act in a physical way that will make them say what are, are you the only one who is a christian what is all these things where we are talking about all of this in i beg man must walk and he said no sorry i don't speak like that again with all due respect something is happening to me say hey you you better finish all that grammar and let's come and soak Gary. They are trying to pull you back. Say the devil is a liar. Say it again. And they will pull you back and say, it's true. Let me go back, Jerry. This koinonia thing, you are just talking like fools. Even God knows. Well, will I lie? I'm like that. I'm, I'm not. And you start complaining and reprogram yourself back to your current state. While people are watching football, you buy a book, 500 naira, and you sit down. When people are hilariously celebrating birthdays when they don't have any money, God just opens a door, 10,000 naira, and you just say, Ah, my birthday is tomorrow. Kai, will I die like that? Let me enjoy myself. Are we together? Your birthday clothes, 8,000. Whatever else you buy, you cook, and the money has finished. And you feel good about that day and continue suffering or someone can say this is my birthday i may not be a millionaire overnight but let me make it the last birthday 
when by this time one year i should at least be able to have options for the food i eat we don't make that decision we don't study what are you doing i'm browsing something what who is that um somebody he i mean very powerful is a wonderful christian and he's speaking minded of great people say i beg i want to watch one film it just came out am, am i mocking movies no please don't don't misunderstand me what i'm saying if you continue to flatter yourself and not commit yourself to personal development you will never be great I was talking with a dear friend today and I was telling them, gone are the days where people think ministers are daft people. They are just people who manipulate the minds of people. Ministers are very intelligent people. It takes a lot of intelligence alongside spirituality to be able to communicate thoughts. I was coming with one of the protocol persons and when we were coming, I was asking him what he's doing now and he said he wanted to go into public speaking. And I said, wow. I said, really, everybody's a public speaker. The moment you are a leader in any field, you are a public speaker. Public speaking is all about communicating thoughts. It takes intelligence, it takes psychology, it takes leadership, it takes content. Not just that God sent you and say, go to America, go to um, whatever, and then you go and stand and say, well, the most important thing is the miracle that will happen right now. Don't worry, well, if you like be sleeping while I'm talking, you will soon suspect you and say you are a herbalist because the foundation upon which the power comes you see our incompetence raises the propensity for suspicion especially when you know that there is the lavish anointing of god upon your life you must have both a sound word and intellectual balance so that as you are communicating the word of god there is a a synergy with your result anybody that listens knows that no 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 this person has paid his price i will be silly believing that he should not be at this level of results say in the name of jesus i receive grace to pay the price of mental transformation i buy the truth and i sell it not hallelujah one way we transit mentally is to find out those who are current reflections of our aspirations and then to buy into their thinking and their paradigms here's how the bible puts it it says follow them so not everybody is worthy of being followed it says honor all men but you can't follow all men listen there is this african trado african mentality of loyalty to people ideas and systems that are obsolete and do not have capacity to make you great listen the bible says and david served his generation every generation has a curriculum of understanding you must understand the generation with which you are sent to minister to and be able to construct your mind to understand their needs and how best to communicate it i'm sent to minister to all men but i always tell people that the age range of my influence and my impact is 15 to 50. If you are within the range, age range of 15 to 50, you are within my generation of influence. Now that does not mean people like our daddy and our elderly ones here, I will bless you, but you will be surprised that Bishop Oyedeko and Papa Adeboye will be more useful to them than a young man like me. Is that true? because they grew with that generation if you're a ministry here and people tell you are ministering to young people you better rejoice and don't think it's an embarrassment because that means you'll be ministry for a long time if you're a ministry and every of your member is at least 60 65 i have a very sad news for you you are not going to last because um those people are at the level of their life where they're interested in legacy don't tell them speak well no not at that age my brother they are writing books and mentoring another generation we laugh at those in children's ministry and say are ah, you as big as you are those children in 20 years will become leaders now in the world we have young people i foresee times when in the next 10 15 years you will have presidents in their 20s young people whose minds are malleable and flexible the world has grown enough 
to discern results more than biological age when you have results they allow you look at france has already set the pace now with their prime minister other nations will follow through a time will come when if you are not competent early you will join a queue that will never reach your turn forever i want you to believe what i'm saying it is true it is good that a man bears his yoke in his youth pay the price now pay the price now you may be laughed at now but pay the price are we blessed change your perception change your paradigm don't focus on just starting business as wonderful as that is or getting a job as wonderful as that is pay the price pay the price to build your mind then your job i have said it again and again i'm not necessarily talking about money but you don't make money off business you make money off your understanding you don't become great off the physical things you do you become great off your understanding may the lord cause us to be men and women of great understanding in the name of jesus you've heard me say it again and again that we will all be great but the greater part of the news is that we will all know ourselves you will see it happen yes you will see it happen we may not look like it now the bible says now are we the sons of god it says and it doth not yet appear until you see the quality of children that our generation will produce filled with the holy ghost from age two why because a healthy mindset is the head of that family loving god because you understand the principles that at age 60 you look 30 because both the joy and the peace and the prosperity of the lord together have constructed and extended your life in quietness and peace that you will be called Beulah and Hephzibah unperturbed by the vicissitudes of life and people ask you how are you doing it you say I can reproduce it again and again it was not luck pray in one minute and say Lord help me grant me grace to be passionate about transforming my understanding stop complaining about the physical results you do not see brothers and sisters that should be the least of your concern Lord deliver me from a fake life are we praying deliver me from a life that tries to show I am there when I am not there I receive the patience I receive the patience I know that I'm not going to become a millionaire overnight I will not become anointed overnight I receive the patience to carefully build my understanding lift your voice and pray there is an understanding that will make me an exceptional man of God there is an understanding that will make me an exceptional wife, exceptional husband, exceptional career person, exceptional businessman, an exceptional politician. I focus on mental transformation. I pay attention to look for men and women who are a reflection of my desire. Your future is somebody's experience today. And the Bible instructs that we are transformed by the word of God. But again, by following them who through faith and understanding, allowing our minds to rise above our cultural limitations, everything they have told you growing up, you will never be great. You are poor. You are small. You are a non-entity. You probably have failed again and again in life to a point where you do not believe that there is such a possibility for favor. Something has told you you will never be a good wife. You will never be a good husband. It could be friends, backgrounds. I'd like you to pray and say, I cast down every imagination and every thought that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ. I bring every thought to the obedience of Christ. I decree and declare that I am well able, 10 times better. My life has no limitations. My only limitation is the voice of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, I am limitless. hallelujah listen don't listen to what i'm saying and think i'm just talking nonsense if you don't believe what i'm telling you you'll fail in life yes you will and you will live an angry and resentful life our society is full of very angry people do you know 
one of the reasons why people are angry is not because of their challenges it's because of their understanding and their interpretation of it the bible says to rejoice in the lord rejoice in what if you rejoice in your certificate one day it will make you angry the day you are not promoted if you rejoice just in your husband alone your wife alone your child your car your business all those things they fluctuate but it says rejoice in a constant factor called the Lord and again I say rejoice and your joy will never have a reason to bend when when you see people happy and making merriment and rejoicing sometimes they say, ah, these people are lucky if you know what those people are going through half it may kill you but they have made up their minds that their joy is not defined by the things around them they understand that joy is a fetcher in the realm of the spirit you use it to draw from the wells of salvation it's not circumstances that make, the bible says the joy of the lord is your strength meaning when i lose joy i lose strength and satan understands this so he will orchestrate it i thought you said you will enter a relationship by january you even open your mouth and told people now it's november oh, my sister and you just say hi how about god there are many men in koinonia now when they see me you are already responding to it but the joy of the lord oh lord i give you praise i thank you where is the god that brought the servant of isaac to come and meet rebecca that same god will connect me lord i give you praise before the arrival of the man i continue working on myself to become a woman of virtue that the day that gentleman sees me he will never be able to sleep again good preparation what do you do while waiting for your miracle among many things praise and prepare mm. praise and prepare is god blessing us yes you will never and i say it with all humility you never see me putting my hand on my chin and say hi life you say why now I say, Can nigeria you not seeing what is happening I choose to be joyful I choose to make merry in my world there is absolute peace the world you talk about is the one your mindset created oh in my world there is peace and love and joy apostle you see what is going on in this country I know but I know that there is a God in heaven he was not dethroned he's alive hallelujah he's alive Apostle, are you hearing that terrorists are entering churches and bombing everywhere? Oh, I understand that as the mountains surround Jerusalem, there is a construction. I am happy. Joy is a defense. You plant fear and plant hatred and before you know it, what you used to believe, you now stop it and throw it away. No. Be joyful. Prophesy to your neighbor. Say, be joyful. Say to another, remain joyful. Amen. Yes. When two people are fighting, the first thing that disappears is laughter. So when you cannot laugh and you are happy before God, something is wrong. Oh God, I'm here again. Abba, you say, better come and answer me. What is all this thing I'm saying? Is it that you are not seeing my own prayer request? Or is it that Apostle Son is not touching my own? What is all this? I keep writing this thing. And when you, the devil says, please continue. I, I beg you, continue. You frustrate Satan when you look at your challenges and rejoice before them he says what then do i do it's a sign you are not living in the flesh are we together you get up in the morning and there's no food and you can have a sarcastic roommate or neighbor who says pastor gary has finished though they say it with sarcasm are, are you do you have people like that around your life yes they will say it to me please prosperity confessor gary has finished there is soup but no gary i tell god there is already soup just help us with gary they try to mock you but do you know mockery is a mystery every time listen every time men are mocking you it's a sign something has left heaven and satan is trying to use men to stop it read your bible every time they mocked men when the mockery was at the apex the result was almost arriving When we started out in ministry many people mocked and said nonsense and said all kinds of things and the lord told me just continue to rejoice and celebrate and hallelujah look what he's done and will continue to do by his grace make up your mind that you are going to be a happy person make up your mind from today's teaching that you will be joyful 
apostle nine o'clock my rent must be paid my brother anger will not pay rent your your annoyance will not even add to it so you better be happy because even physically it can make some, what is making you joyful like this and you say i'm smiling in the midst of the storm i say storm what storm and the person comes in tell your loved ones to be happy our generation of young people are becoming unnecessarily old because of stress you see somebody 20 years old they tell you he has bp <laughs> sir what are you thinking about saying my life i'm 20 i'm not in a relationship like, ah, are you joking what in the world is this what's what's wrong with you listen to our character building series work on your mind what did you watch which movies have you been watching that have raped away your patience but when you see somebody rejoicing always happy you come back from koinonia i'm happy somebody is grumbling in the car you just say well god bless you you arrive home you are happy what will we eat well they may not be food and truly sometimes it can be painful but lord i give you all the praise how long will i keep dancing for as long as the answer comes let me tell you waiting for miracles is like getting pregnant i would never have the privilege of having that experience but one thing i know is that i've been in the hospital many times to see the joy of giving birth to a child for as soon as you travel travel in joy brothers and sisters the god who promised you will bring it to pass so yes i have seen men celebrate the victory of trusting God I will hold on if I perish I perish if God said it I believe him is there anything too hard for me to do I am that I am is there anything too hard for me to do I am that I am God is speaking to you. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Listen, brothers and sisters, hear me encourage you tonight. Be patient with God. Be patient. Be patient with God. It didn't take you one day to build that understanding. Just continue with God. Apostle, it's been three years I've been coming for Koinonia. I can't even pay my transport. Don't worry. The word of God is working. The day the miracle will come, not even your prayer will stop it. God says it's too late. When your mindset has built it, no. A day will come. In one month, you will see cars in Koinonia. You'll be like, oh, it's a season. It's not a season. The, it, the car is being given to you now. Your colleagues are saying, my brother, won't you buy a car? Don't worry. Don't go and kill yourself trying to get loan anywhere. Just calm down. Leave the issue of loan and stay with God. Take your Okada with honor and give God praise. The day to come, it will come in a grand style. I assure you. You have only two shirts. I've noticed this is the only thing you wear. Well, I'm not ashamed of it. At least I'm not a thief. I will iron the shirt. It's faded. But I thank God you are seeing it now. I was looking at some of my photos today. So I'm not even very... I looked at some of them and I said, Ah! God, you are faithful. What are we saying? You are so faithful. Listen. Let me give many of you a message of hope. At your level, I was worse than how you look now. So you better encourage yourself. And say, if I'm at this level and I'm already smiling like this. It means when I get to a level higher than where I am, is joy unspeakable and full of glory. Number four. What's the third price? Is the price of being skillful. Write it down. The price of being valuable. The price of being skillful. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 16 It's become an anthem in Koinonia The gift of a man And I add the gift of a man That has been identified Developed And added to with excellence Take note Not just the gift of a man The raw material potential gift No sir It won't bring you before great men The gift of a man An ability A potential Identified 
developed are we together now and then alongside excellence when you serve your gift with excellence the bible says it will make room hallelujah and will bring you before great men nobody celebrates potential we recognize potential but we celebrate potential that has been developed the world we live in rewards value you must be able to rise to a point where you provide value that is needed and useful not value that you know your value must be needed and useful the kingdom of god is built upon a reward system listen carefully the kingdom of god is built upon a reward system money being only one of the rewards ease is a reward for being valuable are we together now very important proverbs chapter 13 verse 15 it says good understanding procures favor good understanding gives favor good understanding is like a pregnant woman when she gives birth the name of her child is favor it says but the way of the transgressor a transgressor is not a sinner the way of a transgressor is hard hardship has a formula you can predict it good understanding giveth favor but the way of transgressors is what you must be skillful nobody stays close to me and refuses to be skillful you must be skillful we train the leaders in this ministry to be skillful the workers everybody you must be skillful oh i can sing wonderful but will don muen call you because of your voice have you worked upon yourself what do you know about singing the truth is that many of us at least to an appreciable level we have discovered areas here and there in our lives but the challenge for many of us is the mental and physical inertia that laziness to develop ourselves to a point where we get to a point of unconscious competence everybody shout it after me say competence say it again competence let me tell you something i've learned about competence competence defies age gender tribal and racial um, differences and, and all of and sentiments I have seen people rewarded regardless of where they came from I've seen people rewarded and blessed different fields listen anything you are doing if you do not plan to be a leader in that field don't do it are we together I will never commit my energy to anything that I will not be a leader in whether it is ministry whether it is business you may start small but your the those who are rewarded in any field are the leaders of the field in the academia the professor collects the highest salary why because he has been able to upgrade his mind and access value to that point where he deserves it you may be a student or a lecturer or a staff or a worker but if you have not risen to that level of competence you may never have the privilege of access make up your mind that I will be competent say it I will be competent say it again I must be competent the law of value your value when developed decide who pursues you your value when developed decides who pursues you Mike Mudok teaches that your a problem is an invitation for a reward a problem is an invitation for a reward until there is a problem that you can solve I teach our school of ministry students that you are unnecessary herein lies the mystery of people ignoring you when you are not valuable you will not be a friend to anybody write this down discover and develop problem solving skills discover and develop problem solving skills be a master at providing solutions and you will never be ignored be a 
a master at providing solutions and you will never be ignored be a master brothers and sisters what we do that you call ministry is solving problems you know I've said it again and again many people get angry when men of God are blessed because many people carry they propose that understanding that men of God are lazy people who just receive free money from people if they believe that men of God eat the church tithes and offerings and they buy cars and buy houses it may be true for some but it's not so for most men of God become blessed because they are offering value that the value is spiritual in context now I am teaching you is that true I'm reshaping your mind I'm adding value to you the system of the kingdom is every time you dispense value whether you sell it or give it free you are authorized to be rewarded are we together now you only have a problem with a man who you see blessings in his life whether financial and otherwise and you cannot see the value equivalent so when I look at a billionaire like Bill Gates I see the value equivalent that's why we don't harass him if I look at a criminal who is not offering any value yet his bank account is fat then I know that the equation does not balance before you ever criticize a blessed man examine the value now you may not have risen to a level of perception where you think what is doing is valuable enough to bring reward but it still does not matter everybody say I will be valuable say it again I will be valuable I will be skillful become a master at something koinonia and wave poverty goodbye become a master at something if I ask you what are you a master at and you cannot tell me in one word at best you will wallow around the realm of mediocrity and never rise up to be something the concept of being multi-talented is good but those who are masters in life are known for something there must be a skill that sets you out then other skills are auxiliary supporting skills that lift you are we together now i'm not only a man of god and many other things but most people know me as a man of god and they may think that's all i am and that's all that i do there are many other aspects to my life but there is always a skill that opens the door that skill that brings you to the table of greatness then you leverage upon that and other gifts and talents are now supporting is that true yes you must be valuable now the oil in nigeria and africa is having a lot of problem fluctuations here and there and you can see that the whole nation is moving down that's a sign that we were never offering real value are we together if we we're offering real value the depleting of the oil prices should not affect our GDP necessarily because there should be skilled labor there should be captains of industry and people who are skilled because we are largely depending on oil there is very little reward this uh, our society pays very very little reward on meritocracy the people the those who deserve things are not rewarded but in certain parts of the world when you are content even if they hate you that reward for sure will come to you in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you may you be valuable being valuable will drive shame out of your life I tell you this being valuable the Bible says study to show yourself approved it says a workman that needed not to be ashamed there is a relationship between ignorance and shame are we together there is a relationship there is a correlation between ignorance and shame those who are angry insulting every blessed person insulting those who are making things happen in society are those who have not paid the price to identify their giftings their ability their skill their talent and to invest time resources and humility to build themselves to a point where they become leaders of their field i've made up my mind that in everything i'm involved in i will be flawlessly competent it's a commitment i've made to myself and I pray that you make that commitment tonight. Never settle. The enemy of your next level is the success of your last level. Be careful. Failure does not make people fail. It stimulates them to go high. But the moment you begin to achieve results, there is a chance that you will be complacent. I will be valuable. 
become a master solution provider there is no mystery about wealth it's not a miracle it's not magic it's a system a reward system of the kingdom remember that i said your value on its own cannot bless you it must be developed everybody say developed there is a season of refining your value one gentleman sent me a text in the course of the week and said apostle i'm starting ministry i don't know exactly what to do but i believe that as i start i think i hope i'm getting what he said correctly i'm starting and i know that god will bless me just speak a word i said no sir it's not a word that moves ministry a word is over you then principles guide you as you walk obviously that gentleman will not last one month he will be angry at the neighboring churches and be angry at members who come and go and not know why they are going you hear people complain why will you come to my church and receive miracles and go away and they think the solution is just prayer man of god change my story yes god can change your story but the men of god or the men that come to your church are human beings they respond to value by the time you continue to give people informations that are needed and useful and they watch their lives transform the bible says he makes me lie down in green pastures you cannot make them lie down but you can make the pastures green then they will come and lie down they never visit green pastures when it is truly green they lie down information that is spiritual information that is transforming information that is needed and useful well researched and intelligently communicated backed up by the anointing of the spirit that's the kind of information that stays in today's world and in today's church any other information outside this let me tell something with members members are very funny they can say ah you know you say something that is complete rubbish and somebody stands up and says my god and while they are doing that you are so impressed with yourself and next sunday he never comes again members for you are we learning how was my preaching today ah, i mean i can't even start i mean it was it was it was strange and instead of the man of god to be honest enough to admit that guy and try and go back and trust god to help he said you mean it i mean that's that's he says, sir this message is a, is a bestseller and then the mem the person does not come the moment somebody opens a church near you in a heartbeat they will leave you because they were never loyal to you they are loyal to themselves and their commitment to their transformation and if you lose relevance and you cannot be a strategic contributor to their growth spiritually and otherwise then there's no reason why they listen to you i've committed myself that nobody listens to me and just says this person well, well just a daft no 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 it takes a lot of study it takes a lot of labor research commitment i'm committed to doing it this is the key to remaining relevant are we together You must be skillful. Write this scripture down. We're not turning for time's sake. Genesis 41. Um, okay, let's just look at two verses. Genesis 41. The whole scripture is from verse 14 to 46. That's the whole context from verse 14 to 46. But please give us 14 and 31. This was Joseph now. The Bible says, Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon. And he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came in unto Pharaoh. Are we together? Now he began to interpret Pharaoh's dream and then to proffer a solution. And in verse 33. Now therefore let Pharaoh look out for a man. Look at a politician. After he finishes marketing himself. He said, Pharaoh, it's not like I'm saying I want to be the one. But you, since you are smart, who has committed himself to being that valuable? Look for a man who is discreet and wise. And when you find such a man, mm, when you find such a man, do what? He sees, he programmed his own promotion. When you find that man, this is the level of result that should be given to that man. Set him over the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has shown you this, there is none so discreet and wise. Everybody say mastery. It's leadership. This is called leadership. Pace setting. Trailblazing. 
that no, this is not competition this is the reward that comes when you labor and stand out competition is in the realm of mediocre you never see planes clashing in the air because there's enough space it's cars that move around and have traffic for a very long time you seldom see traffic in the air there is space for champions hallelujah say i'm one of them and pharaoh said to joseph for as much as god has showed you this there is none so discreet and wise let's continue reading um thou shalt immediately be over my house and according to thy word shall all my people be ruled only in the throne will i be greater than you go ahead and pharaoh said unto joseph see i have, I have said thee this day over all the land of egypt did he ask him what tribe did he ask him are you a jew or you are this you have solved my problem you have reward and pharaoh took off his ring the ring in his hand and put it upon joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck go ahead he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had and they cried before him bow the knee and he made him ruler over the land of egypt let's see something interesting that happened now and pharaoh said unto joseph i am pharaoh and without thee shall no man authority through competence shall no man lift his hand or foot in the land of egypt let's finish it two more verses and pharaoh called joseph's name but whatever that is that's a very long name there and he gave him to wife asena free wife getting a wife becomes easy when you are valuable this is the revelation god is giving us yes you can clap getting a wife becomes almost effortless when you are valuable god programmed that way not everybody will produce the same result but there must be a token a token a sign that you are going somewhere and joseph went over the land of egypt the last verse how old was he and joseph was what this is somebody's lifetime achievement he did it at age 30 if you got born again at 30 you are behind time i teach on the graph of life you can get my message that's a sign that you need to catch up and when he stood before pharaoh king of egypt and he stood before pharaoh king of egypt and joseph went out from the presence of pharaoh and went throughout the land of egypt your competence can give god space to lift you your competence can give god space to lift you make up your mind to be valuable pray in one minute before we talk about the last point and then we'll pray father in name of jesus i receive grace to be skillful lift your voice and pray plant in me a resentment for mediocrity plant in me a resentment for average being a local champion being satisfied by little results being celebrated by mediocres competing myself with people who are not even doing anything i receive grace are you praying in the name of jesus i declare i decree and i declare go ahead and pray lord i will rise in business i set myself to become a leader in that field in the mighty name of jesus in my career i will rise to a managerial level i will not stop till i reach the apex i will not celebrate the mediocrity that has come with my background if you're a northern and pray hard pray twice in the name of jesus the mediocrity that comes with my territory i i declare that i break through it if i need to take certifications i set myself to personal development if i need to upgrade myself in knowledge i receive grace if i need seminars and training i receive grace if i need to submit myself consciously for mentorship i receive grace grace to follow those who through faith and patience i will not waste my day again I will turn my laptop to a university i will turn my android device to a university i take advantage of the information on the internet in ministry in business i find out the leaders in my field and i press to know what they knew hallelujah let me tell you how to know you are becoming a leader when somebody is following you if there is nobody following you to learn from you you are not a leader you claim you are a businessman show me those who you have raised because wisdom is justified by her children
most people who follow you are people you have mentored unconsciously you were minding your business producing results and your result became too obvious to be ignored the book of mark says all men seek for thee please if you truly are part of this ministry resent mediocrity are we together resent mediocrity doesn't matter whether you graduated with a pass up graduated with whatever you can re-engineer yourself re-educate yourself then you will change your finances then you will change that talk that 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 statements they always make they will continue to jay at you and say Saul killed 1,000 David killed 10,000 competition will never leave the habitation of mediocres there is a realm you must rise to repeated mistakes are a sign that you are in ignorance before you take out any physical step again go for knowledge number four pray in the spirit for one minute thank you lord jesus your word is changing me i receive grace hallelujah the fourth price and we'll be done for today please i want to have everybody's attention because what i'm about to teach you is a very big secret most of you may think you know it but i want you to listen to me with your spirit listen with your heart the price of building quality relationships is the fourth price you must pay if you want to establish extraordinary results in your life the price of building quality relationships relationships are advantageous connections connections relationships are advantageous connections the easiest way to be wealthy and to be blessed in life is through relationships i've taught you this i'm repeating it so that you will understand the easiest way to be blessed in life brothers and sisters is through relationship relationships are powerful relationships are irrefutable there is no champion without quality relationships relationships are currencies they can buy anything money can buy anything money can buy relationships can buy it the only reason why money is useful is because there is a human being at the other end to collect it that human being can choose to say my relationship has paid for it i've said it again if you use money to pay for everything in life you are not working in wisdom now money is only one of many currencies relationship being the highest at the keda second only to godliness and your spiritual connection let me tell you something of all the currencies that men used to purchase results in life physical money notes currencies is the least of them there are seven currencies i hope that by god's grace i'll teach it next year seven currencies we use to purchase results in life everything in life is bought it's just that money is not the only currency relationship is a priceless currency higher than gold higher than the dollar lend this god called abraham alone and lot who was related went with him that was the only thing lot did and he became stupendously wealthy relationships can determine the next course of your results and lack of it can keep you stagnated almost for a lifetime please i want you to learn this the presence of a quality relationship in your life can define the next level of your success lack of it can stagnate you sometimes even for a lifetime you are one quality relationship underline quality you are one quality relationship away from your next level of results believe me on this you are one quality relationship away from the next level of your result you know all of this already my emphasis is not just to talk about the relationships but to be able to guide us on principles i've noticed believers know very little about relationships 
this is why many of us have been grounded although skilled a few scriptures four of them one amos chapter 3 verse 3 please write it down the bible says can two walk together except they be agreed modern day interpretation two cannot walk together unless they be compatible there must be similarity in their paradigms and understanding two people cannot become friends when there is a large difference in their perspectives there must be similarity you must believe similar things about god about life about money about family it qualifies you to be friends second scripture very very touching scripture proverbs chapter 18 and verse 24 proverbs chapter 18 and verse 24 it tells us that he who desires friends you must sow that seed proverbs 18 and verse 24 lets us know that relationship is a harvest meaning that until you sow that seed there is no harvest of relationship it says a man that hath friends must first show himself what friendly and trying to show yourself friendly will require you for bearing and even sticking closer than a brother most of us want the harvest of friendship and relationships and we never sow the seeds you don't go to a farm at around this time waiting to harvest when you did not plant relationships are harvests we must sow the seeds proverbs chapter 13 verse 20 proverbs chapter 13 verse 20 read with me one to read he that walketh with the wise shall do what but a friend of foolish friends, what will he get it didn't say foolish people don't have a future that's not what the bible is saying the bible says you are a product of your environment he that walks with the wise shall himself be wise but a companion of fools shall be destroyed please write this down everyone relationships do not maintain themselves relationships do not maintain themselves it takes commitment on the part of all the parties involved to maintain relationships relationships do not maintain themselves this is a fallacy that many of us must be delivered from relationships do not maintain themselves it takes commitment on the part of all not some all the parties involved to maintain relationships please listen to this and you will be surprised that you will multiply your success relationships do not maintain themselves apostle people don't like me show me the seeds you are sowing the seeds of friendship are we together now apostle nobody wants to walk this koinonia people serve they say greet one another they don't even greet me no sir how to maintain relationships this is the crux of the teaching how to maintain relationships i want to give you seven keys every one of us make sure you learn these keys if you truly learn these keys i give you a guarantee those outside is dark but make sure you're writing those online connecting everywhere i want to show you the reason why your favor might be delayed number one the first key to maintaining relationships is avoid competitive jealousy write it down key number one you cannot sustain quality relationships until you are ready to avoid like a cancer competitive jealousy we're going to read all the scriptures every scripture i'm giving you are going to read it. so media please help us on that wise i'll give you a number of scriptures proverbs 14 verse 30 quickly please then we'll look at 27 verse 4 proverbs 14 and verse 30 the bible says a sound heart is the life of the flesh are we together read the b part it says but envy or jealousy is what rottenness it has a a disease effect to your bones let me tell you something competitive jealousy destroys you jealousy is like a wound 
competitive jealousy destroys you. Believers are very, very competitive people. Jealous people. You bought this car, I buy it too. You bought this suit, I buy it too. If, if, you know, I'm not just saying it for koinonia alone, but this is something I've observed. This is one of the reasons why many believers worldwide, especially in the African continent, we are obsessed with the passion to prove points. And so we do not have the patience to allow time and preparation to come to fruition. Men of God compete with themselves and all kinds of things there there are healthy dimensions of competition when you're speaking from a business perspective and you can challenge yourself and spoil yourself to excellence but the church has a plagued competitive jealousy members koinonia is quiet thank you jesus because that that means that the holy spirit is pounding on this is exactly how result i love you too much and i must teach you this Proverbs 27 verse 4. Many of us fall sick being envious of people. Listen. Very, very powerful description. Look up please. It says wrath is cruel. That means it's not good. Don't do it. Anger is outrageous. But compared, you know, in comparison, who is able to stand before envy? In other words, envy is worse than anger. wrath is quell anger is outrageous but who is able to stand before envy envious people never get results in their lives they live their lives in bitterness and pain could this be why many of us do not maintain valuable relationships last scripture proverbs 14 verse 30 okay we already have that we read it already proverbs 27 verse 4 we'll just leave those two avoid competitive jealousy say in the name of jesus i receive grace to be patient until the word of god manifests in my life i reject jealousy i cast away jealousy from my life lift your voice and pray in one minute it will sting your ego but brothers and sisters this is god speaking pray the spirit of competitive jealousy I take it away from my life please pray envious of my workers at work envious of my business contemporaries no envy is sin it's not just bad it is sin sin against yourself you depress yourself there are many people that don't sleep in the night this lady was my junior in school she's now married and I'm not married you are envious this person I was the person that that trained this person he's now a millionaire i'm no longer i'm a pastor this is my son it's all those jealousy and envy kill it now lift your voice and pray in the name of jesus i come against it satan you will not destroy my propensity to quality relationships competitive jealousy god bless you number two very quickly what is the second key to maintaining relationships? I was surprised when I was studying this. I found out that a, a research was done. And it was, it was told that one of the top three reasons why relationships do not last is because of evil speaking, backbiting, and gossip. So the second point is avoid gossip, backbiting, and evil speaking. The Bible calls it ill speaking. Statistically, you can go and check it. The top reasons why relationships break. Give us Titus chapter 3 verse 2 please. And then Proverbs chapter 6 will read from verse 16 to 19. Avoid gossip, backbiting, speaking evil. Unfortunately, and with all due respect to the body of Christ, for some reason, the church in Nigeria, I don't know if it's because of our African background, we are experts at gossip, experts at backbiting, experts at speaking evil. To speak evil of no man, are we there? To be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. To speak evil of no man. 
it is amazing how there is an appetite in people to talk ill and evil of people there are believers that come to church only to come and find out what is wrong are we together you speak evil of people no. we speak evil of our parents we speak evil of leaders pastors business people we speak evil of our government we speak evil of anybody if it is not you every other person has a problem you will never maintain good relationships like that and you will lose out on opportunities for cheap victory is God speaking to us avoid gossip gossip is a great sign of weakness gossip is a sign of mediocrity it's a sign of lack of confidence in yourself it's a spirit I'm sorry to say it and please don't be offended most of us the homes where we grew up from that's the norm that's where we got this mindset everybody talks about everybody gossip backbiting speaking evil Proverbs chapter 6 from verse 16 to 19 Proverbs chapter 6 just write it and look up I'll read it these six things does the Lord hate so God hates it these six things does the Lord hate seven are an abomination unto him we're reading to 19 number one a proud look number two a lying tongue number three hands that shed innocent blood number four a heart that devised wicked imagination there is such a heart feet that be swift in running into mischief 19 a false witness that speaketh lies and the last of them is what he that soweth discord it didn't say among men among who you find them in every church and every ministry experts are joining the heads of nice people together hey jimmy i i wouldn't have told you but have, have do you know have you noticed that every time koinonia comes if there's a way pastor alpha looks at you i will just you about it later it's devilish it's devilish it's devilish you are sowing seeds of discord there are many people who were happy friends until a wrong information came in between them there are husbands and wives that live in hatred because a third party was introduced adam and eve were living in harmony until there is a third voice you must be careful third voice is ruin quality relationships how many of you god wanted to lift you until somebody came in with a report and say sorry you. how many ladies would have been married now but someone who sows seeds of discord sorry i i overheard somewhere that you like this lady are you are you blind i just came to advise you are you blind this lady that has lived like this she was my neighbor growing up so it's it's something i know is that how you hate your destiny and the brother goes back be careful because when we pray during miracle services we pray very wild prayers and tell god to do those any and everything standing on the way of people's progress and you must be careful that that's not you because the prayer will be answered anyway are we together he that soweth discord do you know that gossip can be habitual meaning even if there is nothing to say because you have trained your mind you will always you just see somebody pass and say ah let me tell you something i didn't plan to talk but no don't laugh almost everybody is guilty of this so when it's time to pray we will cry before god first for yourself and say lord i'm guilty i am very very guilty are we together yes worship team standing to worship i see how this guy is standing that's the guy i'm telling you hey you don't know that guy i saw him around that area yesterday he likes the lady he likes it. what is your business for heaven's sake what is your business are we together yeah what is your business gossip backbiting ill-spoken words you just hear that somebody is rising you say who who is rising 
No, I need to do something about it. Don't become like that. Ill-spoken words. The appetite. You see, every time you talk bad about people, I want you to remember that you are destroying God's creation. You must stop it. You put yourself in the shoe of the ones you are destroying. When you tear down people and destroy them. How many people tear down men of God? You don't think about their churches. What happens to their members while you are destroying them? What happens when you are talking ill of a pastor? What happens when you are tearing him down? What happens when you are insulting the pastor's wife? Think of what happens to her reputation. It affects her leadership. We are experts at doing it. It's a habit that I trust that God will break from us. Because many of us, this is what drives friends from us. Come Pastor Alpha. God brings your destiny helper. He holds your hand. In two weeks. In two weeks. Everybody knows everything about you. Ah. I came to Apostle's house. I saw him counting dollars. Don't mind that quietness. Oh, Apostle is rich. You think it's an information you are giving. And God is saying, you see. This person, you are not a candidate for my help. Carry your trouble and go away. And say, ah, but God is going to help me. No. We have destroyed our lives. Destroyed opportunities. How many people would have gotten jobs if they knew how to keep quiet? Do you know some people so gossip that they gossip even about themselves? They have, it's an obsession. If there is nothing to talk about, you can even be the person to act the drama yourself. I beat my wife. I just want you to know honestly. And you see, listen, the thing about gossip and ill speaking, please listen, this is a lesson for all of us to learn. The thing about gossip is, it is like lost. Whoever is the object there is the one you will tell the information to. Including a child. Imagine me now coming to talk Assuming Pastor Alpha has a child that is grown, but because there is an appetite, you are walking in a house and you are now talking, Kai, boy, this is your father. Now, wow. you are poisoning the mind of the child. What do you think happens now? Are we together? We must repent from the spirit of backbiting and gossip. Romans chapter 16, verse 17. Please give it to us quickly. Gossip. Terrible backbiting terrible now i beseech you brethren mark them which cause division and offense is contrary to the doctrine that we have learned do what to them what is the scriptural remedy avoid them avoid them listen hold on let me teach you something be careful when you partner with gossip because very soon the person gossiping will need favor from the one he's talking about and you will be the scapegoat to use and secure that favor a typical example is workers people who work in their profession your boss your superior they come and meet you and say this is our boss said so 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 and so and they gossip when promotion comes what do you think happens you say hey, boss i i just came to appreciate you and to confess something sir let me be honest i've been talking about you you see he has bailed himself abby but sir this is even the milder part of the story the worst one is i'm about to tell you someone else who joined me because he's looking for promotion and all of a sudden a boss that says see me by three o'clock you come back and say pack up your bags because next week you are leaving this company why sir please leave my office seed of discord gossip is cancerous backbiting 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 you must avoid it like a cancer number three the third way to maintain relationships avoid offense avoid offense what is offense the ease with which you get irritated angry and resentful is called offense offense is a measure of the ease your ease of volatility there are people who get offended you can just look at them and ah, it's like this your cloth did you iron it well and they say you are insulting my pedigree what no 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 no. there are people who are volatile the ease with which you get irritated 
angry and resentful is called offense first corinthians chapter 13 verse 5 first corinthians chapter 13 verse 5 talking about love now it says love does not behave itself unseemingly seeketh not her own is not easily provoked or anger if you are truly walking in love i don't care what your background is you will not be easily angered there are people who get angry very easily very easily bros how now you say me i'm 10 years older than you i am please don't think that because me on a very good day won't you be saying God, easily offended you see offense is a product of judging things from the lens of your own perception of yourself when you judge things from a faulty perception things will be interpreted from the lens of your own limitation offense refuse to be offended refuse to be offended there will be occasion for offense in every relationship from a marriage relationship a business relationship ministerial relationship you must make up your mind as a choice that the blessings that i seek to receive from the relationships god is bringing in my life is greater than any offense offense destroys because you see when you are offended one of the many ways you act is speech and every time you speak with a heart of offense usually the Holy Spirit is not in charge of that conversation. You will talk in the flesh. You can make it means that you cannot withdraw again. Many people have lost precious relationships because if they were a little temperous, they would have regained it. Many people have lost business opportunities because of that. Offense is an advice. It's an encouragement. The Bible says one of the signs that characterize the end of days is that many shall be offended let me tell you you are not a true human being if you wake up and in 24 hours there is no reason for offense especially if you are a leader people do things that should get me offended every day i do things that should get people offended every day an example is what i'm teaching now are we together now there are things that get people offended you must make up your mind that I will not be offended how many men of God get offended and they can preach they get offended at home they come and climb the stage and you know that that preaching is a lashing down of something that happened between them and their wives and their children the kind of examples they are giving are not relevant to any other member unless their family so you know that this is a this guy is just talking to his wife or the neighbor or the worker using the pulpit offense makes you small offense makes you cheap offense reduces your worth let me tell you something about offense most of those who offend you or they know they offended you the goal is that their joy is in your reaction most of those who offend offend intentionally but when you grow above it you demonstrate that you are living at a higher level of living after this service now on your way home an angry driver an angry man something will happen that will offend you or you must make up your mind and say satan you're a liar i already see your hand i will not be offended say in the name of jesus i reject offense is god speaking to us number four how do we maintain relationships practice forgiveness practice forgiveness Mark chapter 11 verse 25 then Ephesians 4 32 please give it to us Mark 11 25 practice forgiveness I don't know one relationship including the one of you and God that can thrive without forgiveness it's not God you are forgiving God is forgiving you all the time because there are people who really are angry with God okay I forgive you God let's get back into the relationship and when ye stand praying most prayer warriors miss this let me tell you why there is hardship in people's prayer lives it's not all about demons and when ye stand praying what is the rule forgive comma if ye have ought against any that your father in heaven 
may forgive you your trespasses it's amazing how we pile up people in our hearts some of us have physical books physical books like police reports where you write this sister jane embarrassment sam laughing at me pastor alpha shouted at me the other day while he was preaching and you write everything protocol department <laughs> their own star 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 they offended me ushers i was falling before everybody and they were watching me i injured myself and you write it down then you leave everything and say father don't you know that i'm human and god says really it's like a small child that begs you for something then you give him and say give back and he refuses that's exactly what we do you can never live in this life without forgiveness what is forgiveness forgiveness is giving forgiveness is giving it is giving pardon and mercy forgiveness a disposition where you are ready to let go even before the offense happens forgiveness forgiveness is a, is a dimension of giving if you are not a forgiver you are not a giver not forgiving is one way of manifesting greed it's not just refusing seed forgiveness but let me balance very quickly you don't forgive just to make peace forgiving to make peace is one of the benefits of forgiveness but the primary purpose of forgiveness is to release yourself so you can move forward because there are times the people you forgive are still not ready to receive it let me be very honest and let me balance forgiveness is only useful when there is repentance a willingness to turn away forgiveness is useless to the person you are forgiving if there is no repentance it is useful to you let me show you what offense does um can i use someone sam please come watch this this is what offense does i want to move forward but i think sam is standing my way and so i'm trying to push him will i move forward holding him i'm trying to hold sam i can't move forward myself this is what forgiveness is he can be there not even deserving it but i release him so that i can move forward i can leave him and his trouble there if he accepts that he is wrong and turns then we make peace and we can work together if he refuses i still forgive so that i can move forward let me tell you the most wounded in the refusal to forgive is the offender or the offended the person who was offended is the one who is most wounded it is painful that the person who even offended you is not even aware and plans to do it again because it was a product of mindset so your assignment is to have a disposition where you forgive as a leader people will offend you every day people will do wrong things every day you must forgive hallelujah everybody say i receive grace to forgive say i let go everyone i'm holding in my hands holding people hold them in your heart i will never forgive my mother except i may have said my own and you can never receive blessing i will never forgive my father for what my father has done if i have a knife i will kill him by myself and say daddy die i'm the one killing you i will never forgive that person who raped me when i was four years old i will never forgive that uh, what they call it now that brother he went out with me and broke and scattered my heart please forgive so that you can move forward forgive so that you can move forward turn it into prayer in one minute lord i'm tired of holding people I release right now I let go that boss in the name of Jesus I release my husband I release my wife I release my co-worker I release my business partner I release the man of God I release my head of department I release my escorts I release the members in my department I release Joshua Selman make sure you pray I release everyone who has offended me because I want to move forward I want to move forward practice forgiveness hallelujah 
it says and be ye kind one to another tender hearted forgiving one another even as God for Christ's sake forgave us very quickly Ephesians chapter 4 verse 32 okay Ephesians 4 verse 32 is there and then give us Luke chapter 6 verse 37 Luke 6 37 let's hurry up Luke 6 37 Luke chapter 6 verse 37 it says judge not and ye shall not be judged in other words every time you judge people you are scheduling seasons for yourself condemn not and ye shall not be condemned forgive and ye shall be forgiven make sure you practice this make sure you practice this number five very quickly how do i mean quality relationships be tolerant be tolerant forgiveness is different from tolerance forgiveness is somebody's shortcomings that he hopefully will adjust from it tolerance is somebody's personality or a default belief system that may not change you have to incorporate it as part of that person's living there are people i wish i would tell you everybody around you will change there are people who will not change so you switch from forgiveness to tolerance you accommodate that limitation in their life factor it and build a system around it is god speaking to us yes i have many friends all kinds of friends and just like me they are very funny people everybody has all kinds of attributes the same way i am to them too but it takes tolerance there are some things in me unfortunately may not change tolerance you don't you turn it i like everybody around me to talk but say i don't talk you don't need forgiveness what do you need tolerance. or you you talk too much i just ask you a question where is where is uh, my trouser you say uh, the other one i didn't ask you about what happened where is my trouser please tolerance your destiny helper may be a talkative if you are tolerant to the talkativeness then you receive the breakthrough everybody in your life cannot be you and cannot be like you if everybody was like me the world would be a terrible place you would think the world would be a nice place no you don't want to know some of the boring aspects of my life this world will be a sad place <laughs> you will only be studying and reading and sleeping what a world I am so happy for people who are not me they add flavor I benefit from the joy of them not being me you must have a high degree of tolerance Colossians chapter 3 please help us 12 and 13 Colossians chapter 3 is called forbearance you must tolerate people put on therefore as the elect of God holy and beloved bowels of mercy kindness humbleness of mind meekness long-suffering 13 forbearing one another and forgiving one another if any man have a quarrel against any even as Christ forgave so also do ye forbearing one another you have business partners you will need forbearance are we together you are in your office working you need forbearance in a ministry like this you need forbearance everybody cannot be you brothers and sisters learn this oh god change them wonderful prayer but they have their wills if they don't change does that mean you will not move forward tolerance number six the sixth principle for maintaining quality relationships is that you must be a contributor to the growth of the other party or the parties involved you maintain relationships by being valuable to the relationship you must be a contributor there are parasitic relationships relationships are meant for mutual benefit maybe not equally mutual in, in terms of degree of contribution i cannot be your friend and be at a high level with you when you are not contributing anything in my life Jimmy is my friend he contributes greatly in my life I contribute greatly in his life so there is a basis for continuity are we together now if you are not valuable to a relationship that relationships lifespan is very small it will never please hear this 
this is true for marriage it is true for business it is true for ministry there are many people who complain and say joshua selman doesn't want to be my friend doesn't want to be this and i said no no i want to be your friend it's just that i am passionate about value be a contributor money is not the only thing to contribute love kindness godliness are we together now there are so many things to bring into a relationship not everybody's looking for money in a relationship there are people who have conquered that realm. they need love they need value they need understanding they need help you must learn this if you want a guy to come into your life what value are you going to bring i say guy what value are you going to bring even the church and christ truly speak he doesn't need anything from us but because of his love he limited himself to allow us space to be able to contribute something that's why when we worship and praise him is we 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 we're not necessarily adding anything to him but he has limited himself that way so that he can give us room for expression relationships must be mutually beneficial if there are five people in a business and only two are running that business they are the two who will be the closest of friends the rest will just be freelance people around who will feel angry don't be angry in a relationship that you are not bringing quality value please i want us to go back home and think about the reason why our family members do not value us so much the reason why even in the house of god it's true that we love everybody unconditionally but we are not committed to everybody at the same level it is according to contribution say amen you must be a contributor if you are helping me spiritually you will be close to me if you are helping me financially you will be close to me if you are helping me in terms of the love for God if you are helping me fulfill my assignment you will be close to me if you are not doing any of this I love you but you can't expect to be close to me the same way if I'm not contributing meaningfully to your life you love me but I can't be close to you relationships are based on contributions I want you to learn this wanting friends around you to be so committed without anything to bring to the table is flattery brothers and sisters there must be a commitment no matter how little it is it may be prayer it may be love it may be rest sister you may not be educated but you can bring love you can bring patience are we together yes you are the one that when the guy is getting sad you say no calm down it may not be so you are the guy that will say no 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 my dear calm down i know she offended you but take it easy there has to be a contribution you walk with the holy spirit you are rebellious you are disobedient you don't pray no secret place and you say lord why are you not close to me and he says what is all this are you not hearing what the apostle is saying you have to be the mutual contribution give me time i give you more of myself become a contributor to the growth of the relationship number seven so we wrap up for tonight practice genuine love the last key to maintaining quality relationship practice genuine love underline the word genuine there are many people whose relationships are purely based on what i will get in as much as i have spoken about value brothers and sisters if the only basis for relating people is what you will get you are a selfish personality whether as a husband as a wife as a man of god as a member as a worker as a career person as a business person it is not always about what you will get it is about who you are are we together my life will be an ugly life if the only people in my life are just those who can contribute to me no while we were yet sinners unable to contribute anything in due season christ died for us proverbs chapter 10 verse 12 please quickly proverbs chapter 10 and verse 12 hatred stirred up strife but love covers what let me tell you something brothers and sisters it is one proof that the friend you have whether it's a love relationship or any kind of relationship will last when you truly love somebody you will make very legitimate excuses for their weaknesses 
it will be difficult for you to find reasons to throw people away if you can throw people easily it's a sign that you don't deserve to be close to them love can cover a multitude of sins I see people in relationships not love really all kinds of relationships and the ease with which they get offended no sir if five people come into your life not love relationship now necessarily five people come into your life none of them can stand two weeks the problem is you not them are we together hatred stirred up strife but love covereth how many sins that means there is nothing anybody does to you that cannot be covered when there is genuine love the secret to peace all kinds john 13 35 john 13 35 then give us first john 4 20 first john 4 20 john 13 35 john 13 verse 35 By this shall how many men all men know that ye are my disciples not if you pray in tongues not if you have a Christian name if ye have love not for God love for one another loving God is not necessarily the ultimate proof that you are walking in love because it says that if you love God that you do not see or you don't love your neighbor that you see how can you claim you love God that you see listen brothers and sisters this issue of love you one another is something we must indoctrinate ourselves in I, I have told myself I cannot hate anybody in the house of God no impossible impossible truly speaking I'm not just saying it I live a very peaceful life <sighs> Apostle, why are you angry can you no I've been delivered. been delivered I live a happy and peaceful life peaceful life very peaceful life very peaceful life by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples if ye have love one to another do you love people or do you use people you can use people you can use a relationship you can use a wife you can use a husband you can use a boss you can use employees pastors you can use members you can use workers the workers in this ministry know with all humility that I love them with all my heart I love the leaders they know it I'm lavish about it I love them with all my heart how could I ever hate the people that so serve with all their heart this is why some of us never get the anointing this is why many of us never command results our hearts are full of hatred there is always one bad story to say no first John 4 verse 20 and then we round up first John 4 verse 20 God has spoken to us tonight if a man say even if his name is Joshua Selman if Joshua Selman says I love God like many Christians say and hated his brother he didn't say hated he didn't describe what kind of brother and the offense the brother did he just said if he hated his brother please read on if you're a Christian what is he he didn't say he's an angry person and God understands that person is a liar for he that loveth not his brother whom he had seen how can he love God that he had not seen church we must not only love Jesus we must love ourselves more pastors who we experience levels of the anointing when they switch just from loving God and extend it to loving men any pastor that's why I honor the Lord for the ministers around I'm, I mean Reverend Dr. Tende is here God bless you thank you so much a number of other ministers scattered around every time I see them come visit like this I am very blessed love there are times I pick up my phone and I just send all my pastor friends text messages and I just tell them how are you how is the work the Lord bless you the Lord honor you there are times that I just do it to my friends. Some of you, you never do it. Has he ever done it to me? You want a harvest of a seed you are not sowing? No, sir. If you had sown that seed, the friend you used to know that is now a great man, you would have maintained a relationship that would have blessed you. But when you had privilege, the number he had then that you had, you did not invest in it. And now he has changed his life. 
only those who blessed him have the new line you are not part of them and you are angry and grumbling and say all these pastors i remember when god started helping me a lot of people were offended and said what is all this thing eh? i tried to call apostle he cannot call you call you say protocol he doesn't know me and i said you can imagine two years you have never asked whether god whether koinonia people are eating whether how did you collect offering is god faithful are there demons attacking you can i pray you didn't send any text and then you just hear that god is faithful and you want a prayer request and just call and demand no it's not done that way it's an investment you don't get anything from it when you don't commit to it there are people who don't honor anybody they don't recognize anybody they don't care just call and say look I have Bishop Oedipo's number C, Bishop David Oedipo, let me call. And you call, he says, see all these Hogan men of God. I will not pick if I'm him. No, sir. It's not because I hate you. They are busy maintaining the relationships that are interested in them. Please don't make arrogant demands of attention over relationships you are not willing to commit to. A little prayer. I'm not talking of money. A little prayer. Man of God, how are you, sir? Just to find out. Mommy, how are you? daddy how are you pastor how are you it's been three years we've not seen i hope god is doing well god bless you and increase you they are noting it even if they don't have time to reply they are noting it the day they see that number there are many numbers i don't have say but if i see them i know i know that this person cares a lot about the ministry how is koinonia some people are very sarcastic greetings here my name is this these are my problems you just listen it bless you and I say, what? Just like that? No. There are people who only call when they need help. Sir, um, just to greet you, my mother has come again, no, honestly. Uh, my father has come again, no. my sister. Remember the, the thing I told you the other time? You don't remember me? I, I'm sorry, was it last week? No, I met you June last year now. June last year. I met you and you are reminding me today. must invest in relationships you must love brothers and sisters i stand by the integrity of god's word and i tell you this if you practice these things before last koinonia it would have changed your life there are some of you this is what you need this is the revelation you need to enter the next level it's not like the job cannot come there are many people now that admission will start you're going to start disturbing our daddy prof and disturbing a lot of other people. Sir, I remember it's me that sent you CV and says, is it because I'm coming for Koinonia and you are seeing me like that? You've never done anything. You've never said take five for life and all of that. No, 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 no. Sir, the, the, I, just to let you know that uh, by God's grace, I'll be finishing now. You promised me in 300 level that you'll give me money for, for project. You didn't follow it up, not in prayer, not with wisdom. No. Please learn this. Practice this right now. Call, write the list of the top 10 relevant people in your life and start investing in them and watch what happens to you. Because when a man loves you, everything he has loves you too. If a millionaire loves you, his money loves you too. An anointed man loves you, his anointing will love you. There are anointings that reject people. Yes. That's why people don't receive. We are going to pray and you are going to cry to the Lord and say, Lord, the answer to my challenge will have to be one of these five. Either I have not paid the price knowing you or I have not genuinely submitted to authority. I have not committed myself to mental transformation. I have not paid the price to be skillful and valuable or I have not paid the price to build and maintain quality relationships. Please rise up on your feet and let's pray. Thank the Lord for the word you've heard tonight. Lift your voice and begin to bless him. Extraordinary results. Results that defy limitation. These are the systems of the kingdom we engage in. Mambraba satabarado shabra katesia. Eleketo sabrata shabarada balada balada boko subredia. Mambra katoka shabra de sikataria bose. Are you praying? Lende kresko tara suzia baka shanda la bariatasi. Hallelujah.
Praise the Lord. I'd like us to pray. I've listed these areas. You know the areas where you honestly need to flog it out with God. In the next one minute, please swallow your pride and cry to God and say, I obtain mercy. I obtain mercy. Lord, I have not paid the price to know you. I am lazy spiritually and otherwise. I have not committed myself to pressing into the things of God. There's too much distraction in my life and I make up my mind that I will change from today. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I've not committed myself to transiting mentally. I'm still carrying age-old ideas that are destroying me, ideas that are responsible for my pain, ideas that are responsible for the misery in my life. I'm a product of my mindset. I have by a wrong mindset driven good people in my life, driven good opportunities in my life. Lift your voice and pray, I receive grace, I receive grace, I receive grace. No more laziness. From tonight, I commit myself to personal development. Lord, I receive grace to be skillful. I receive grace to be skillful. I receive grace to be skillful. Lord, I receive grace to be excellent. Grace to be competent. Grace to be excellent. Grace to be competent. Grace to be excellent. Grace to be competent. Finally, pray for relationships. Lord, all the areas that you have touched tonight, I receive grace. I declare that I'm free. The Bible says, he who the Son of Man sets free is free indeed. I declare that I'm free from offense. I'm free from bitterness. I'm free from gossiping, backbiting, ill-spoken words against people. I only seek the good of another. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Ghost, I let go every offense. I make up my mind that I'm pressing to the place of destiny. And in the name of Jesus, no power of hell will stop me. Hallelujah. One last prayer point. Father, every dimension of result I should have entered that lack of observing these truths have kept me i declare that your mercy reopens that door for me go ahead lift your voice and pray i decree and i declare the mercy of god again i decree and declare the mercy of god again i decree and declare the mercy of god again are you praying i decree and declare relationships that i've lost because i did not this understanding i decree and declare by the mercy of god they are reopened business opportunities financial opportunities ministerial connections strategic relationships connections that would have lifted me bailed me out of trouble stop shame from my life hallelujah i won't harm you with words from my mouth i love you i need you to one more time i won't harm you with words from my mouth i love you i need you to survive it is his will that every need be supplied you are important to me I need you to survive. Lord, I stand before your people and we declare connecting with all those who are following from the nations of the earth. And Lord, we declare that we are ready to put these truths to work. In the name of Jesus, we lay our pride tonight. We humble ourselves before you, the Lord of glory. You have brought your word to lift us. The Bible says he sent forth his word. We receive the sent word into our hearts. We commit ourselves to applying the changes that are required. And Lord, we declare that your grace and your mercy will back us up. Let there be results in our lives. We decree and declare that between now and the end of this year, let our lives command strange results. In the name of Jesus Christ, all of the limitations in our lives that grant Satan and demon spirits access to lead and destroy us, we declare by the blood of Jesus that they are closed and closed forever. 
in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen everyone please keep standing you're here tonight and um, whilst you were hearing me speak the Holy Spirit was speaking to you and saying that you need to make your ways right or especially you are here and you have discovered that offense is eating you up it has killed your spiritual life you literally backslid just because of offense and bitterness and hatred and you're finding it difficult to let go you are here you want to give your life to Jesus you want to make up your life you want to take away these things and say Lord I need to start afresh if you're here inside outside any of the overflows please I want you to make your way very quickly we have one minute for you wherever you are make your way to the front thank you Jesus someone is responding to this call God bless you someone is responding to this call quickly please if you're coming make way to Jesus go ahead make your way Lord I want to make it right with you tonight I can't live my life like this I came for koinonia I may deceive others but I cannot deceive myself Lord I'm ready to lay everything down everything down go ahead God bless you God bless you God bless you God bless you you're still coming outside please double up and come double up and come those online connect with us wherever you are and pray the prayer as I lead God's people to pray please come direct them direct them God bless you I see people coming make your way to the front very quickly hallelujah please come quickly I'm about to lead them to pray thank you most of you uh, have given your life to Christ you are rededicating your life some of you are giving your life to Jesus for the first time doesn't matter what category you are part of please mean this with all your heart mean this with all your heart Jesus is here and let this be a new beginning for you say in the name of Jesus I lay aside every offense I lay aside every bitterness every anger every unforgiveness I declare tonight that Jesus is Lord of my life I hand over my life and everything about me to Jesus I receive eternal life into my spirit and I declare that from tonight I am a changed person from tonight the love of God dwells in me the Spirit of God dwells in me no more bitterness no more hatred in the name of Jesus the power of sin and Satan is broken over my life forever in Jesus name Lord Jesus, thank you for this one. Some of them are handing their lives totally to you. And some of them are making up their minds to let go every offense and everything that has held them. I decree and declare that you honor their decisions. And I pray that from tonight, your life will skyrocket to a new dimension of achievement. In the name of Jesus, you will love Jesus and hold on to him, never to replace him by anything and anyone. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for making this decision. Please follow the lady waving her hands. She's smiling at you. And you have a few details and you'll be back to your seat. God bless you and thank you very Jesus. much. Let's honor them. Koinonia, thank you so, so in much. Your life, that even when it is physical, we believe you have been blessed by this message. For additional information, you can visit us on Facebook. On www.facebook.com slash Koinonia Eternity Network International. Or follow us on Twitter www.twitter.com slash koinonia on